Are you ready, brother? I'm ready, man. Let's do this. How you pronounce your name? Wev? Weverson. Weverson. And yeah. everybody called you Weverson or? Some people call me Wev. Or Mad. <laughs> Mr. Mad. <laughs> Mr. Mad. Mm -hmm. Weverson. How are you, my friend? I'm fantastic, man. How are you? Good, man. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you for coming. Of I'm course, still trying man. to get my brain like yeah, man, in no one worry. place because early morning jumping around. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know the feeling, man. I'm, I'm honored. I'm really uh, excited to be here. So thank you for having no, me. No, definitely, man. Um, since I met you guys, mm -hmm. I always be very inspired by the fact that you guys are so young mm -hmm. and managed to put together a group of artists that are promoting the arts. Mm -hmm. Not just you guys do art and have a place to work, but also invite people to show mm -hmm. and invite people to watch what mm -hmm. the new generation is, mm -hmm. is bringing. And... I respect you and, and thank you for that, man. It's so awesome. I, I appreciate it. Um, it. It's exciting because I wouldn't, we couldn't have imagined things c turning out this way and, and slowly but surely things are just evolving. And uh, it's exciting to be talking to someone like yourself who has done so much for the community in our area. Uh, so uh, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, no problem, man. So, for people to get an idea who you guys are, mm -hmm. let's let's talk a little bit about you as an individual, of course, mm -hmm. Weverson, the architect, are you? Exactly. And yeah. also Weverson as the Mr. Crazy, Mr. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Mr. Matt, yeah. The Matt Lab head, uh -huh. or oh, oh, I don't know if you're the head of the group, I'm assuming, but uh -huh. I'm not sure, and I don't want to sure. get people mad at you. Or me for saying <laughs> no it. problem. So let's explain a little bit who you are and what is your, your group. Sure. So uh, about me, my name is, is Weverson. I was born in Brazil. I moved to the United States when I was uh, about like 10 or 11 years old. Um, I grew up in the Connecticut area. I went to college. Uh, I w actually, I went to NCC for two years. And then that's where I studied architecture. And then I went to, uh, to Wentworth Institute of Technology in Boston. And I got my undergraduate and I got a master's in architecture there. And um, I stayed there for a couple of years working at a high-end residential firm. Um, but afterwards, I just felt like I needed to do something different. And that's when I moved to, I moved back to Connecticut trying to figure my life out. <clears throat> and, um, and, then, uh, and then that's when I slowly started to kind of dive into the arts. I had an opportunity to, I was doing some freelance work and I had an opportunity to design a house for a builder in Westport. And as part of the project, we were going to demolish the existing house. And at that point, I, re I was already starting to mess around with the idea of of starting my own company. I've always wanted to do that. Um, I always wanted to push myself to to create something of significance. I always wanted to kind of, uh, for lack of a better way of saying it, I always wanted to be famous. But famous for something good, mm -hmm. doing something inspiring people. So my original idea was, um, I'm going to put mustaches on shirts but I want to make like individual mustaches for everybody, right? So maybe the Javier mustache would be like a tattooed styled mustache, right? So it's like, you know, the mustache would symbolize something that's important to you. Mm -hmm. um, so I started that and then uh, this project came along and I was like, hey, um, I was working with uh, Marissa, who was a colleague of mine from Boston. And um, we started this thing together and I was like, look, we're gonna, I'm going to design this house. We're going to demolish it. So why don't we just like do something cool? Like we put a mustache on it or something before it's demolished. And, and, and at the time, um, Jessica and I were also together and, uh, you know, she was, she was with me throughout that whole, whole project and we s started working together on that project. Uh, and it slowly transformed into like, okay, well actually let's not just do that. Let's make it something more in impactful since we're going to demolish this house. And it's this idea, this idea of destruction is so powerful, but negative. Um, because like, you know, destroying something isn't like a positive thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, let's, let's uh, transform it into something positive. So one day I was laying in my bed and I was like, how can you destroy some, what is something that we all want to destroy together? So that's when I thought of fears. I was like, wow, like we all have fears. We always want to get rid of our fears. So let's all paint our fears onto this building and then let's demolish them. Wow, that's cool, man. Right, and cool then idea, yeah. and then let's use the momentum from this project, and raise money for a nonprofit. So that was like a long way of kind of <clears throat> giving you a background of, of where I came from, right? And and that was bef without even knowing that was the beginning of of the Mad Lab. 
so Jessica and I, um, and I'd been in Norwalk for about, I think just about a year, maybe less than a year. Um, <clears throat> and, and I didn't know anybody. So I just started to like text some friends, you know, reach out to some people. Jessica knew some people. I met, um, Jackson, uh, we are peps. He does, um, He's, he's done a lot of the graffiti uh, work oh, okay. here in Gray uh, graffiti. Yeah, yeah, Gray yeah. Gray graffiti. Um, like I don't know if, if you've seen the balloons on Wall Street. Yes. I so he those. did he did those. Oh, but okay, it's not the same guy who did the uh, graffitis in your building of the kind of characters. No, no, that's Yeti Fresh. Oh, Yeti Fresh. Yeah, yeah. Right. Also, so, so also great. Yeah. Shout out to both of them. Yeah, they're they're amazing artists. Yeti is killing it right now. Um, and, and Jackson is also fantastic. He's, he's he you know he works with the Blind Rhino. He's been doing a lot of work for them. He, he's the same that paint. Uh, the Wall Street Wall, uh, yeah, across the street to the bank. Yeah, remember next what, to the, yeah, when you painted the big bird? Uh -huh. he's, he's the painted, one that was painting next to it, right? Exactly. Awesome yeah, king, yeah. man. I met him there. He was really, yeah, he's, really nice. He's a really cool dude, and like literally, he was the person who introduced, like, he opened the floodgates for me. Oh, cool. because I met him. So I was doing the shirts, and I went to a print shop, and I was telling this guy like this whole idea, this whole thing. He was like. Yeah, man, there's this guy on Instagram, and every time I go to, like, look your name up, his comes up because your names are similar, and he's an artist, and he's a graffiti artist. I was like, yeah, like, yo, put me in contact with him. I need artists. So he was like, okay, and I, I reached out to Jackson, and I told him about the idea, and he was like, yeah, man, I'll bring some people. And literally, he brought everybody. He brought Sugar Cane, he brought Five Fingers, and, uh, and a bunch of other people, and, like, some of his other friends from, like, um, outside of Connecticut. I mean, like upstate Connecticut, and um, and we all came to this house, um, and oh, and, and another thing is, I, I partnered with the Greenwich High School um, to get artwork from the students related to fear. So um, the kids for like two weeks they were creating artwork related to fear, like within their actual class, right? That was part of their curriculum in a way. Wow. So the day came. Um, we all came to the house. We spent all day there. We, we got there in the morning. My friend, uh, Zuki tunes was there with his entire like DJ equipment. And he's got like some really like funky vibes. So like we're in the middle of the woods. It felt like a fairy tale with him. Yeah. Like, like literally spinning records and like cool, like EDM music playing in the background. My mom had a fire pit and she was like cooking food for everybody. <laughs> And it's funny, too, because it's, like, in the middle of Westport where it's, like, super fancy, kind of, like, surrounded by woods. And there's just a bunch of people just, like, spray painting this house. Um, and everyone, like, you know, spray painting about fears, talking about the subject, everyone kind of on, on this positive vibe. And we covered the entire house. Um, uh, and then we went inside the house. We did some artwork in there, too. But then we got all the artwork that we got from the kids from the high school. Mm -hmm. And it had th something from, like, fear of failure fear of spiders fear of guns fear of you know like gun violence and school shootings and like the entire spectrum and we covered the entire house like the inside we just glued it to the walls and it looked kind of like like a haunted house um and then uh, after a while the house was demolished um we recorded that and we the, i'm so sorry to interrupt we were, do you guys make videos and photos of the whole process yeah so we got um w the other thing was cool too i connected with another friend of mine and i told him about this whole thing and he's a videographer so we actually did an interview that day so we have all this footage and we've been meaning to create a documentary for it we just for haven't sure. been able to get through it um so so afterwards we demolished the building and then we we raised uh and then after that we did a a fundraiser at the Rene Soto gallery mm -hmm. when it was still around. It was actually one of the first shows that he did at his gallery was with us. He was also one of the artists. Um, and that whole show was about strength. So like we destroyed our fears and then we focused on our strengths. Mm -hmm. And um, so all the artists that participated created original artwork related to strength. All the work was sold to raise money for the nonprofit. Um, once we demolished the building, we had a party at the blind rhino to show like, a doc like to show a video of the house being demolished so like all the artists that were there got to see their work being destroyed by like a bulldozer um and again like we raised a little bit more money and at the end of the whole thing we raised like you know i think f between four to six thousand dollars i don't remember if it was six thousand was the gross or what we actually donated but we did donate, donate a good chunk of money to uh kids in crisis in greenwich um and then like this whole experience was so magical you know like Jessica and I were just so thrown back by like that this idea like 
I almost didn't believe it. I just wanted to do something cool. Like mm-hmm. generally, like uh, I just wanted to be like, wow, like this is a cool idea. I want to see it through. But I didn't like believe it kind of. I was like, yeah, whatever. Demolish our fears. Uh, and then I started to tell myself, you know what? Like I'm going to play into this more. Like I want to actually get something out of this. So I'm going to like not I'm going to pretend like I'm going to go in all in. Like if I want to destroy a fear, what's a fear that I want to destroy? And for me, it was like this idea of disappointment, right? Like I, you're, you're a busy guy. You're doing so many things. I'm doing a, a ton of stuff too. But there's always a little fear in the back of my head of like I'm, that I'm going to be disappointed at the end of the day that like, you know what? I didn't do enough or this wasn't good enough or I didn't live my best life. Mm-hmm. So I like that's what I painted on a building, right? And it was therapeutic. It, like, you know, by the end of that day, like I literally like I cried. It was like, wow, like this is incredible. I can't believe all these people came together. I can't believe we actually did this. I can't believe we raised money. I can't believe, you know. And and then after that, it was like, what's next? What else are we going to do? It, it, it's amazing, right? How sometimes we, we have those ideas. And this happens so often in so many different fields or whatever. But sometimes we have those ideas or projects that we want to do. And we kind of, people ask, you know, like, for example, you got to do a painting. You know how you got to look at the end or mm-hmm. like you can see and you might no, You don't really see it. You kind of have an idea, mm-hmm. but you surprise yourself at the end with mm-hmm. the outcome because the process itself dictate you steps that weren't planned a- ahead exactly. and, and then evolve into something else mm-hmm. that no matter how creative you are, it always shows its own life. Let's mm-hmm. say that way. Each project shows their own life. Mm-hmm. So it's always, it's always surprisingly amazing how at the end you can of course sometimes things don't work as we want it yeah, <laughs> sometimes uh-huh, yeah. you know things get bad turns but when they come mm-hmm. out and and if you put a heart and you really plan and you really work mm-hmm. because that's the other thing you might have a plan but if you don't really work for it mm-hmm. it's gonna be very very tough that it happened right yeah. so when you really put your mind and you really put your heart you work hard for it mm-hmm. and then you have people around you that support you and help you mm-hmm. and at the end you see that project is like wow yeah. it's un- unbelievable how it seems like the project has its own life since 100%. the beginning yeah. it just came through you right like yeah. ideas and thoughts they just come through you and then being able capable to see it mm-hmm. is kind of awesome and thankfully or hopefully it got to inspire other people but also thankfully inspired us Mm -hmm. for if we stay aware Mm -hmm. of this situation this kind of outcomes how they happen and whatever starting from just a thought Mm -hmm. it also is a great way to keep your mind open for the next oncoming projects because we always kind of censure ourselves or pull barriers Mm -hmm. to ourselves or oh i want to do our festival in norway for Mm -hmm. example what you're doing right we talk about that in a minute and then you're like, nah, that's going to be too much work for what? The end is going to be hard. It's going to be crazy. Maybe it won't come up. We always try to block ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh-huh. But if we have a minute to sit down and, and kind of, okay, remember that one time when we destroyed the house yeah. and, and it was not just a destroy, it was a, you know what I mean? Yeah, we, we I, I think that, I, I, I feel that before, like, we psych ourselves out. Like, you know, that and that's something that I struggle with sometimes. It's like, I always want to do so many cool things, but as, as, you know, like, it's so easy to get caught up that's part of my process. That's what I've recognized that like I have an idea. It's super cool. And then like I psych myself out like that's going to be too hard, too much work. Right. Or I can't do it. And then whatever, I still want to do it and I go through with it. Right. And it, and at the beginning it's exciting. And then like you get to a point where it's like, you know, you've been working on it for two months and now you kind of hit this low and you're like, ah, oh, screw this, man. I don't want to do this anymore. Like you got to kind of like find that inspiration again and keep going because I mean, personally, for me, that's how, like, everything is. Like, I like I, I really want to see the end result. Like, even though I don't know exactly what it is, it's like, I want to work on this painting, right? I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but I have a direction. And then I start, and then, like, it's like, oh, like, this is, like, this is not going the way I want, or why did I do this? You know, you get into that rut, and then, like, I fall in love with it again, and then it kind of comes through. And like to your point, it's never always exactly the way I envision it. And I like to say that like I'm always pleasantly surprised Mm -hmm. that like it's not what I thought it was going to be. But I'm I'm pleasantly surprised that it's like it's better than Mm -hmm. I could have ever expected. It's not what I expected, but it's better than I expected, even though it's different. Yes. 
except for those times that it sucks and then <laughs> yeah. you're like fuck I fucking not <laughs> yeah. but yeah definitely man um, how, how you would say is the process of thoughts when you have an idea normally let's say you get the idea right I gotta do this project and you start right away like oh, no this is gonna be too hard I'm not gonna even bother it's gonna be crazy and then you're like no wait let's work on that and then we see it's kind of that order or you would say it's more like oh I got this idea hell yeah it's gonna be awesome let's do it and then you start planning planning and at some point you find the barrier it's like more like that put it. it's more like that mm -hmm. right it happened to me too I would say yeah. to most people mm -hmm. I would say the secret is to overcome that barrier because they're gonna keep uh, I always feel like those barriers come from your brain trying to protect yeah, you yeah you know? I, I think for me what I've learned right because I'm not a wise person like like I'm just so so young into this whole thing like I think I've really only dedicated myself to this seriously for the past like three years so I'm learning so much but what, what year it happened the house 2018 the, the house was 2000 I think 2017 17? 2016 yeah because I met you in 2018 I would say yeah. and it, that already happened yeah so we met after the house had already happened like mm -hmm. we met at Renee's gallery which was like you know already after the house well yes. demolished and everything else yeah I, I think I came to that show that you were mentioning that you guys did there right? yeah so that was uh -huh. well that was that would have been the same year so I, I, the house we painted the house I think was in in like March or something and then the house was demolished around uh I don't know I, I don't remember I, th I think we painted the house in March and then the show was in like September and then the house was demolished after that the next year oh, okay um because there was like a, a really long time, but, um, but but to go back to what you were saying, I think for me I'm sorry, yes. is, is uh what I've recognized is that like I always psych myself out, but it's like recognizing that like that's just part of the process. That like no matter for the rest of my life, no matter what I think of, I'm always going to have some doubt before I start something, and it's almost recognizing that like you know what like that's gonna happen anyways. But the good thing is that, like, at some point, guaranteed, I'll also fall in love with it. Mm -hmm. And then I'll fall out of love with it. And then I'll fall in love with it. And I'll get through the whole thing. It's just that, like, it's going to be crappy for part of it. And it's never not going to be like that. Yes. Right? I, just like life. Like, you know, I used to think that, like, you know, one day I'm going to get to a point in life where, like, I'm just happy and everything is, like, peachy. And, then, and now I'm like, you know what? <laughs> and now I'm like, no, like life would never be like that. There's always going to be, you know, up and downs, up, up and downs. Yeah. yeah. But that's the thing. You have to kind of try to stay focused on the apps. Yeah. No. Oh, hmm, that sounds a little too cheesy. But the point is. Uh, why we got to focus ourselves on, on the. Uh, I know right now I feel happy and excited. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is going to be for sure miserable. Uh, yeah. no, what the fucking. Yeah, no, well, just well, for, today is happy. I'm sure Tuesday gonna be getting happy. Yeah, I feel like uh, I've I've trained myself because it's something I struggle with, right? Like I think we all have our own battles, right? So for me, I I want to be happy all the time. I'm a super excited guy, but it is difficult. Like it's you can't maintain that. So for me, I like to to recognize that like uh, when I'm happy, I try to be present and recognize that like wow, like things are going great. I want to enjoy this. And I don't want to be thinking too much of the future. And I don't want to be too scared of like not being happy a couple mm -hmm, of days. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the days that like I am down trying to focus on like, this is not going to be forever or, you know, like this is going to change or to just like, I always try to like, you know, I just try to be positive no matter what, dude, like it's just so hard for me. And even like with people that are not positive around me is like, I just try to like guide them in that direction just because for me it's so hard. Like, you know, I just, I work so hard to maintain a good balance of my mental health and I'm not perfect by any means. Like it's, yeah. it's still a struggle. So I just, I just need to have that. Right. So I think if like there's people who are always like, cause I, I wasn't always like this, right? Like I, I would always complain or look at things like the wrong way. And it was just easy to just recognize like, you know, after I recognize like, you know what, you just be, be happy no matter what. Right. Like, you know, at, at least yeah. today I'm healthy today. I can actually walk. It's not like I have both feet. I have both arms, you mm -hmm. know, and like there's people who don't and there's people who are struggling with like cancer or something. Right? Yeah. Um, the, the, the fucked up part about about being happy or no stuff like that is that sometimes a disease 
So no matter how much people really try to feel positive, it's never going to work mm -hmm. that easy just because it, it's just a disease. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, it's a unbalanced, you say? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, a, a, how do you say? Unbalanced? That's the word yeah, name? Uh, unbalanced? Yeah, Di unbalanced. Balance? Yeah, unbalanced. Unbalanced, yeah. Unbalanced, yeah. Sometimes when the words are similar in Spanish, I, I forget if you said uh -huh. differently. But anyway, uh, it's like an unbalance of hormones and, and chemical reactions in your yeah. brains and stuff. So it's just hard. But as a general advice, it's very true what you're saying, you mm -hmm. know, and it's very, very it's, it's a very good way to perceive it and approach it. Meaning mm -hmm. kind of when, um, when you feel good, mm -hmm. think about it, you know realize why i'm feeling good why it make me happy why i'm feeling so positive today mm -hmm. not to try to change into our negative thoughts but just to understand and be present and and and, and enjoy that moment mm -hmm. and when that down times come back trying to realize that mm -hmm. same thing you know okay this is just a temporal stage and mm -hmm. hopefully in some moment you gotta go away and then try to remember what make you happy and trying to yeah. explore explore more those yeah, thoughts and, and feelings and, and another thing that like i i've learned I, I I love to listen to like podcasts about like positivity or like business development or any, any of those mm -hmm. like kind of like mental growth type of things. And, and I li I heard this one thing that kind of like really changed my life that it was about, it was about, um, um, anytime that you are in the, in, in the struggling with something, mm -hmm. let's say you're having a bad day, like thinking of it as like a good thing, like, wow, I'm so happy that, I, I got through this bad day, mm -hmm. right? Like today is so horrible or like, you know, I'm struggling today. I'm, I'm depressed or today I had to deal with some really tough things and I'm happy for that because it shows me like I'm so strong, right? Like I think that sometimes the bad days are just as important because it's like, wow, I have the strength to get through anything. Mm -hmm. So like, it's almost like flipping it, right? Like instead of being like, oh, wow, today sucks. And like, I hate everything. But it's like, wow, today sucks. But I'm getting through it, and mm -hmm. which means that like no matter how bad the next day is, I know that I'll get through it because I know I'm getting through it today. So yeah. it's like just trying to find a little bit of light in everything. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. So you you were saying about about the project, right? Mm -hmm. That how it got destroyed. Then you got a bunch of now you know a bunch of people you you mm -hmm. local yeah how'd you ended up in in the mad lab in, the, in that building itself and sure so that was right after that right that was part um, of the process kind of i want to say man I'm, I'm, like, I'm really bad when it comes to like remembering things in time <laughs> so okay. like i might not know the exact time but the way it actually happened was like this um i think that the okay so we had the thing at renee's gallery which was like uh, in like september or something right and then the next winter came around and uh i had connections with like five fingers and sugar cane and some other artists i'm, I'm sorry to interrupt sure. i'm so sorry man anyway that's, whatever um so <laughs> the house got destroyed right uh -huh. we all the art there whatever the new house got built already you saw it you yeah, took photos of that too so the house i think was just finished a couple months ago Mm -hmm. um it's, it, throughout that entire time i was i was still freelancing and i was working with the builder and i was actually designing the house uh which is also like a crazy story um because so he reached out to me t and I, i'm an architect but i'm not a registered architect so i'm technically i'm a designer so i i'm not like in the difference is that like an architect can stamp drawings and send it to the building department and get it approved I can't do that. But you got masters in architect. Yeah, oh. I have a masters in architect. It's it's like going to law school and then passing the bar. Okay, so you so, still need to. So I'd still pass need to get like my certifications and, and all that other stuff, which I really don't have any ambition to do that. Like I could, I just want to be a designer, and I don't necessarily want to like be an architect. I just want to create cool things. So I don't have to, to do but that. But it doesn't affect your career in the future. Let's say, for example, like. Frank Lloyd Wright. What is Frank Lloyd Wright. Frank Lloyd Wright. Sure. Architect. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. and, and in the books are all the projects that he did mm -hmm. and, and whatever yeah. as a architect. It won't affect you. I mean, meaning it, like one day. I mean, it, it would affect me if my thought was like, you know, what I want to do for the next 10 to 20 years is build an architecture firm. Like, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to be more like 
an influencer, a creative, and an artist and build a brand around me being able to be creative. Mm -hmm. And if within that, I have the freedom to work on a couple cool architecture projects, right? And and create some cool designs and cool houses, that's not going to affect me. Because, you know, in order to, to create a project, I can work with another architect or I can work with a structural engineer to get the drawings approved and being able to actually go through the entire process. Right. But so that doesn't prevent me from like, you know, okay. It, it, you, because the way how you focus on your career and what you want to become, mm -hmm. it won't affect it. Right. Yeah. That like if, if I say. wanted to like actually like have a firm mm -hmm. and like, I just want to like just do architecture all day, every day. And I want to have a team that does that. Like, I don't have like, that's what I, that's why I left Boston is because like I, I found myself being like, I don't want to do this. Like, this is mm -hmm. not what's going to make me happy, you mm -hmm. know? And I didn't really, <clears throat> I didn't really go into architecture. Like I was, like, I was very inspired by Frank Lloyd, right? I was very inspired by the fact that like, holy wow, this person designed buildings in like the the fifties that looks like they're still futuristic now. Mm -hmm. So for me, like, that's what I call mad. Like that's what inspires me. Right. So I was like, I want to do cool stuff like that. But I don't want to like work in a corporate world and like, you know, sit at it. I still work full time as an architect. I'm grateful for that. It helps me um, pay the bills. It helps me kind of like create different things and work on the Mad Lab. But I don't want to be a traditional architect. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to be an artist that like, you know, does architecture. Like you're an artist and you, and you, you do mean. tattoos, right? Um, it's I'm like, a graphic designer oh, okay. from college, but I work as a tattoo artist. Yeah. And I still I can do graphic design if I need for, exactly. for the businesses or friends or whatever. Yeah. But I, I completely understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. That, that old man in me, the father, mm -hmm. is, is, I don't know, man. It's like, bro, you should, you should do your career and graduate, mm -hmm. whatever. In reality, I would never advise you that. Mm -hmm. I'm, if, if, if I have the opportunity to advise you on something mm -hmm. six years ago, I would say, Pursue whatever make you really happy mm -hmm. because at the end you gotta spend a lot of hours of your day doing that exactly. job, and you rather do something that really pleases you. Because yeah, and otherwise your life gonna be very, very miserable. And that's what know? I've been focusing on. Like you know, when I first started to like try to figure out my life, right, and being like, okay, what do I want to do? Because like I come from a background where like if I could live my my dream life. I would be just working on cars. I'd be like customizing cars. Whoa, whoa. that's yeah. a grown term. What, what, what is yeah. that? Tell me about it. So, so well, I was born in Brazil, right? Mm -hmm. And in Brazil, like the car community, the car culture is super cool. But when you mean cars, it, it, specifically about you, you Brazil experience, mm -hmm. you mean like tune ups, tuning, yeah, like cars, tuning, or like you get like cars or more like more like japanese cars like jdm cars right uh, so more like, like fast and furious yeah exactly like one kind of. exactly fast and furious one before like it turned into like the avengers <laughs> <laughs> so but it was basically that like you know like taking a car and customizing it like you know like designing it and not like design your car for like honda but like this take a honda, a honda and like souping it up right like making it different making it cool um that was really like one of my first passions, my first like creative passions. Like I would oh, wow. dream, like my first year of like college in, in you know, in, in Boston was like, was that like, I'd go to bed and I'd be like, wow, like I can't wait till one day I'm rich and I can like work on these cars and do these things. That, that has always been one of my big passions, right? And there was a point like, you know, then you, you turn 18 and you have to go to college, you have to figure stuff out and, you know, you have to make money and make a living and, you know, cars wasn't a career right so i was like what's the closest thing what's something that i can do so like my path started with like you know all right well i architecture seems cool i i'd taken like some classes in high school with uh where like design classes right where you like make a bridge or you do some things you know so i was trying to figure out like what are some creative paths that i can go towards right so that's when i decided to go into architecture because I still thought it was cool. I was always, I was still, I've always still had interest in architecture. I remember walking as a kid through my city in Brazil and looking at buildings and like being facts fascinated by certain buildings and the way they looked. Right. I always like things that stand out to be different. Um, right. And then, you know, when I went to architecture school, I was like, well, I'm going to, you know, I, I've always wanted to be recognized for doing something great. Like, I, I think when I say famous, it's less about like the fame and recognition more the fame of like 
this person like you like right like you are a fantastic tattoo artist like <laughs> people you, come from all over the place and pay lots of money to get like amazing artwork on their bodies right i've always been chasing that for myself like i always want to be able to do something and be at the highest level of whatever that is the trouble is i feel like i've never been able to like 100 percent pinpoint that mm -hmm. and that's and, and this is going back to what you were saying about like being happy right so for me that's what i'm trying to do to we're good. That's what I'm trying to do today is just like figure out what is going to make me happy. And by that is not like a job or a career is that like is the everyday thing. Like you're going to wake up every day and you're going to do something like you're going to mm -hmm. wake up every day, come here and like plug some wires in and set up the cameras like that's your job. That's what you do. Right. And you're going to do this. You know, so for me, I'm trying to figure out what what are the daily tasks? What are the things that I'm going to do every day that's going to make me happy? Mm -hmm. Right. So going into an office every day and running an architecture company from what I've seen in my experience is not what's going to make me happy. I enjoy aspects of like having a thought in my mind of what a building can look like, working that through, designing it, building a 3D model. That's awesome. But like I don't want that to be the only thing, mm -hmm. right? I want it to like what I want is to, to have the resources within me and the team around me so that I can work on any cool creative idea. I can do a podcast. I can make artwork. I can design a house. I can do something else. And, you know, and I don't think that that's a, that's a job. Like, there, you know, there's really not, I feel like there's nothing out there. There's no one that's doing exactly what I'm trying to envision. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I can copy somebody or I can like, you know, I'm just trying to figure it out. Yeah, it, it probably is. It probably, there probably are people out there kind of, producers and stuff like that kind, mm -hmm. the kind of people that yeah that yeah that's is in the center of the all the creative process mm -hmm. and not necessarily have to get a hands to do everything mm -hmm. themselves but they know how to manage their time and and the projects yeah and but it sounds fun man it sounds interesting and it's crazy for me that how old are you right now i'm 32 32 yeah it's crazy because the way how you describe it you've been having those thoughts for your life right yeah and and, and still you're finding a way to to, to figure it out to figure it out but yeah. also to materialize them to make them yeah to manifest them. manifest them. yeah um and and not all the time things work that way you know what i mean no. like for me i'm a tattoo artist and i've been tattooing full-time as a, as a job for like 12 years or, or mm -hmm. something like that but i started the first time like 20 years ago but still tattooing came to my life as a happy accident mm -hmm. i wasn't planning to be a tattoo artist mm -hmm. but definitely i was working hard to become an artist that was my dream it was a happy happy surprise. it was a happy yeah. surprise kind of what we were talking yeah, in the yeah, beginning yeah. about having a project in your mind working for that and then at the end you don't know exactly how it got mm -hmm. overcome but uh, this is a happy mm -hmm. accident let's call it yeah uh still i was working to be a painter mm -hmm. Oh, an artist. I wanted it to leave out of the arts. Mm -hmm. That you know the process. So who knows what's gonna happen to you, right? Yeah. But at least you're working in that environment right now, things that you really wanna do and and mm -hmm. and what you wanna become as a as exactly a lifelong mm -hmm. um lifestyle, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, or your income or your job or whatever you decide to do, yeah. right? So so what happened? How you we were you you were doing that you went to the career pursuing to do something mm -hmm. artistic you realize cars are not in the college you cannot learn that in college yeah but then you find so, the career and then yeah so so uh so yeah so i i, I recognized that like i wouldn't <clears throat> i wasn't i didn't know how to do this with cars so i figured you know what i'm gonna go to college and i'm going to have a career right? i'm gonna be an architect and um and i'll be able to work on cars on the side that was like my, my dream and my vision but it's always been a struggle it's always felt like you know like i'm not living my life i'm not living what i want to what i want to do right like i i always every time i talk to somebody i ask them like what their moon vision is and that's basically like asking somebody like if you could live your best life and there was no restriction you didn't have to worry about money and you could succeed at whatever you want like you know it could be like you know raising goats in hawaii like if that's what you want to do with your life I always ask people that. Um, and if I was to ask myself that question, it wasn't what I'm, what I was doing then. So, um, you know, I, I went to college and then, so now I, I just decided that like, uh, 
this is not, I'm not doing what I want. I need to figure it out. And I may move back to Connecticut, connected with all of these artists, um, did Emotion Explosion. That was the name of the project, um, Emotion Explosion. Um, and then... That's the project of the house that got destroyed, yeah, Emotion uh -huh. Explosion. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, uh, and at that point, after the house was demolished, I, I knew all these artists. I, you know, I got to know Five Fingers, who has been a huge inspiration to me since I've, since I've met him. Um, and he, and he invited us to shout out to five fingers. Yeah. Shout out to five fingers, man. Uh, out there inspiring people, spreading yes. love. Um, and, and kicking Reebok ass. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> um, so he invited Jess and I to participate in the Sono Arts Fest, um, as part of like, he had a scavenger hunt and he wanted to, a bunch of artists to connect and do a bunch of things. And each individual artist to donate a piece of art to be like put somewhere. Um, so at that point, since emotion explosion, I had, you know, started to actually like play around with arts and I was like, you know what? Like this is, I want to try this, right? Like, I think that this is kind of more in the realm of what I want to do. Like if I could choose between being an architect and being a successful artist, Like, I want to be an artist, but, like, it's much easier to become an architect and make a living than it is to be an artist. So, you know, um, but at this point, I wasn't afraid of being disappointing myself anymore, right? I really try to demolish that fear. So I made that piece for Five Fingers, and we showed it. And then after that, I just found myself, like, really working on different pieces of art in my mom's basement. And that was, like, you know, when I really started to work on art, like, actually just make things. Like, mm -hmm. I've always loved making things. Like, I've made tables before right um i used to work on my car like you know um i love sound systems in cars so I like you know in in high school i built like a crazy sound system like after school in my shop class um so i was working on these things in the basement i was like you know what like i really i want to find a studio like i want to do this i'm gonna like find a garage you know pay like 500 bucks a month and just have a stingy little garage where i can spray paint and do whatever i want and then i'll start a youtube channel and You know, I'll, you know, work on my social media and I'll build a, a personal brand and, you know, I'll, that, that's going to be the direction. Um, and then, in you know, uh, while this was happening, I started to, to look for this, right, try to manifest it. And, and one day, um, working in architecture, uh, I had a job to do at Wall Street, here in Wall Street in Norwalk. Our client needed a rendering of a building, um, for the project that he wanted to do. Your mom lived in Norwalk? All of this was happening already in Norwalk? Everything is happening in Norwalk. Uh -huh. My mom li literally lives on Main Street, like, you know, oh. like a, a block away from here, like literally around the corner. So as I was coming coming here, I was like, oh my God, like I've been like, you know, <laughs> living next to Javier for like a long time. I had no idea. So, um, uh, so yeah, so I was doing that and then a client hired us to do a project and I went to Wall Street to take a picture of this building It's the old bank in Wall Street. Um, it's the building that has like a, a giant mural next to it with like the angel wings and all that other stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah, so it was that building. And that's next door to the theater. You said Norwood Theater? Yeah, yeah, Is yeah. That one? It's the uh -huh. one right next to the theater. So uh, I came and I took a picture of that building and then I was like, even though that's like really close to where I was living, I was like, I never explored this too much. I've only been in Norwalk for like a year. I'm going to drive around here and see if I can find a garage. So I drove around the block, I drove on Isaac Street, and there was like all these little houses, kind of like, um, you know, very industrial, so it felt like, you know, this could be it. Mm -hmm. And I was just like driving slow, like peeking through the driveway and see if I find a garage that said something like, you know, for rent or something. And that's when I drove by the lab for the first time. And it was just like dingy storefront, like rundown building. There wasn't even any, like, it wasn't even paved in front of it. Mm -hmm. And I parked, I, I peeked inside, there was a giant sign that said like, you know, Milligan Realty right there. So I, I was looking inside. It was all broken. There was no sheetrock. You know, there was like a half bathroom that was all torn up. And I, I called the landlord and I told him, look, I'm an artist. I'm looking for a studio. This might be too expensive, but I would love to uh, to share it. Like I could bring a ton of artists here. We can share it. And I would love to just like bring more art to this community. You know, my goal is to become a successful artist um and you know this is this is what we need we need a place to create and and then and then after that like i you know i ended up talking to him on the phone um and i went back to the office and then i sent that, that was jason that was to jason, jason milligan uh -huh. yeah yeah 
Shout um, out to Jason shout Milligan. Shout out to Jason. And his support to the arts in the <laughs> exactly. community. Mr. Art Daddy. <laughs> yeah, he's he's in charge of pretty much all the murals in Norwalk. He, exactly. he paid out of his pocket just uh -huh. to decorate the city. Yeah. Got the park with a bunch of murals. Uh -huh. He's really invested in, in, in trying to revitalize the area. So it's, yeah. it's exciting to, to have someone on our side. Um, and, and this, again, this is before mm -hmm. I knew of Jason, right? That was the actual, that was the first day I spoke to Jason. I went back to the office. I finished my work and I sent it to the client and the client was Jason. <laughs> and and then when I sent the email to Jason, he emailed me back and he goes, Weberson, did you just recognize that like I was the person you were talking to or something like that? And I was like, oh my God, like that's incredible. It's like so serendipitous, right? Yes. And it was not like, like, you know, I didn't call him because he was our client. I just happened to find something. He happened to be the client and everything. And that was the start of everything. He was like, you know what? Like, you know, I'll help. Right. So um, I was super excited went to the building, talked to him. He said, he, you know, he, he would build something out for us. Um, and I literally, then I just went ham. I like literally designed the entire building. I made 3D models of it and I showed it to him and he, you know, and he basically built it exactly the way we wanted it. Wow. And that was the start of the Mad Lab, right? So at that point, I reached out to a couple of artists and I said, guys, like I'm starting this like studio um, and, and being coming just out of Emotion Explosion, the whole point was that like what I envisioned was that, look, I'm an artist. Like I want to be a successful artist, but I recognize that in order to be a successful artist, like it's a lot of freak, it's a lot of hard work yeah. and you basically need a team. You have to do so much, right? You have to like, you have to create the art, but also there's like the business aspect, right? You have to do outreach. You have to do social media. You like, it's not just like paint and hope that like going back to like, we're talking about, right? Like you have a dream and you have something. It's not just like, just dream about it and then kind of like hope that it happens. Like you have to like put your mind into it and literally like work hard at it every day. Like you mm -hmm. have to be really, really like, uh, mindful and, uh, strategic about it. Um, so I was overwhelmed and I thought like, wow, like this is hard. I can't, I can't do this. Right. Like I need a team. And at the same time, I recognize that like if any other artist like me wants to do that, like they also need a team. Mm -hmm. So, but it's hard to create a team. So I figured that like, if there's a team for multiple artists, right. If we can kind of do a collective, if like, you know, cause I, I saw so much um, positive feedback and so much momentum from emotion explosion that I thought like, wow, like, okay, well, I can be a, a painter, an artist, right? Create artwork. And I can also like do good for my community. And like, that's something that I had learned, right? That if you want to be successful, you have to bring value to people. You have to bring value. You can't just do stuff for yourself. You have to like inspire, entertain, or provide a service or provide a product that like helps people. Mm -hmm. And that's how like you kind of become successful. So I thought, you know what, like, we can be artists and then as a group we can work on big projects like emotion explosion right which in, in eventually would like bring us clout and be like wow like this group of people created this awesome project that raised money for a nonprofit and helped so many people who are these artists right and then so on and so forth and like create this like sustainable cycle that elevates everybody mm -hmm. and that was the genesis of the lab like that's what i wanted to do i wanted to create a studio and and i explained this as the power ranger model where like we're all <laughs> <I> like <that. laughs> we're all power rangers in this studio and we're all out there fighting crime doing our own thing like making our own artwork but then we come together and we as a robot as we morph into powerful exactly we morph into a big robot and then we do something like incredible something mm -hmm. big right that elevates everybody i like that um, i like that yeah concept. and 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 that's how it how it started right so jessica and i kind of uh reached out to a couple artists and then so we started with it was myself jessica jesse bowie and dan wilson um and they came in and you know so they came in as studio artists like renting studio space because that was like kind of the business plan was that like you know we'll have we'll split the basement up so we each have a little station and then the upstairs will be a gallery where we can show our work um and like bring other artists you know i thought like let's bring artists here let's do show other artists uh let's do podcasts let's do like talks like anything that can like bring value to the art community right like mm -hmm. you know like let's invite javier and 
and ask them like, yo, how did you become successful? Like how, like give us some tips, right? And then like allow other people to gain from that, right? Become a creative hub where artists can be empowered to to chase their dreams and to also have actionable steps of like, not just like go somewhere and be like, wow, this is cool, but what now, mm -hmm. right? I want it to be something where like they can come to this place and then have like a laundry list. Like you want to do this? Do you really want to do this? Well, do A, B, and C, mm -hmm. right? Oh, wow. Okay, now I know what to do, right? And then go out and do that and then be successful and then bring that back. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of people, man, out there that says that there is no a recipe for that kind of success. But I kind of agree and disagree, meaning not because there is a group of steps that you can follow. It means they got to work for everybody. It would be nice that it was that easy, mm -hmm. but it's not that easy. You know, you still have to have your own character into it and yeah. your own work mm -hmm. ethics and all of that. But at the same time, I feel like I envy... Or when when I when I was new in this country, and for the first year when I was trying to become an artist, I was working construction. I didn't know what to do, mm -hmm. and I didn't know nobody. I didn't know who to go and talk to, or get inspired by or with, you know. Mm -hmm. And and trying to understand how we can go and find a market. How can we? How can I show my work to people? Mm -hmm. How can I belong to a group of people that all of them are working for the same kind of mm -hmm. cause or, or, or ideal, you know? Nothing of that was around me, at least that I know, and I wish it was because I was so lost for mm -hmm. so many years. And part of the reason that I decided to do the podcast in po was because I feel there is a lot of people that are struggling out there that they might have in their hands all the tools to become successful in whatever they do, but they just don't know, right? Mm -hmm. And having the opportunity to talk to people that not, not necessarily means that you have to be already like successful at the top of the top to be able to give an advice to somebody, mm -hmm. but you already been through a life that put you from one state where you were to now where you are now. Like you've made progress. And you make some progress already, but not just the progress that you have made but how positive you feel about the future, knowing that you feel that you are in a path to it, Yeah. right? And for so many people, just the basic thing that we that we said in the beginning, or right by the beginning, that we, we say like, yeah, we have an idea, then we get all excited, and then we find those blockage in the, in the, in the path, in the way, mm -hmm. and then we're like, yeah, no, fuck this, it won't work. Mm -hmm. Just because, you know, whatever reason it is, our brain or whatever or social comments or whatever it is, put us in that situation where we doubt and then we stop pursuing what we were doing mm -hmm. and then we start over again with another project and we got to find out with the same kind of blockage if we don't go through that. Mm -hmm. So just that simple idea of not because you find a, a whatever, a something obstacle. obstacle. Thank you, man. Uh, you're, not just because you found an obstacle in your, in your life. It means that everything got fucked and you have to now reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's just getting through. It's right after that. Yeah. Or not right after, but you got to see if you pass that obstacle, you got to see how it's brighter in the other side. Mm -hmm. And you got so much experience now. And now you you feel like it's kind of a roller coaster going tack, 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 up and then woof, you know? Yeah, yeah. Not necessarily all the time going to be like, uh -huh. but probably going to be a lot easier than tack, 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 yeah, tack. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So uh I wish, man, it was in my times a space like yours, mm -hmm. like where you guys uh, probably was again and I didn't know it. Bec I, I got to know, you know, this place, I, I think the name is LAA Love Art Association or something like that. Love mm -hmm. Art Association. It, lot, it's uh, a place in Stanford and they had a similar one in, in Bridgeport mm -hmm. back in the day. I don't know if they're still open in, in, in Stanford, but basically it's a building divided a bunch of rooms and the rooms art studio mm -hmm. that artists rent and they have a common gallery area so basically it's your space yeah bigger right yeah um i found those places and i couldn't afford to rent any of those studios um i wasn't selling art i was just doing art i didn't know how to sell i didn't mm -hmm. know anything that was before instagram mm -hmm. probably face before facebook too and i never went into my space any of those other mm -hmm. i i probably they won't even work that well to promote yourself yeah. or your brand in, mm -hmm. in, in that place if you're not a musician. Anyway, I don't I never explored it too much. But 
that play was kind of the same concept. It was similar to what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a big space divided by different artists can work kind of in a collective way. Mm -hmm. S everybody doing individual stuff, sometimes collaborations, mm -hmm. and then a space to showcase your progress and other community artists projects too. Yeah. It's good, man, that you're doing that. Super cool. Yeah, man. I'm uh, I'm excited. And it's a lot of work. Um, and it, since, you know, like, it was literally just Jessica and I in the beginning. Um, and since then, like, you know, a lot of people have come around to help. And, and now and now we also have, <clears throat> excuse me, Wilson, who who was our, our, our partner and basically, like, helps run the entire operation. So it's it's exciting. And it's... Um, what What is... Raven something. Yeah, so Jessica, that's Raven. Ra Ra uh, it, it what is, is that Instagram? Her Instagram? Her Instagram is, is just Raven. Just Raven? Yeah. I mean, J U S T like just or, or oh no, it's Raven. It's uh, it's Raven it's, something. It's, it's I forgot it's, what it's it is. R R V underscore. What is it? <laughs> yeah, I'm about to get in trouble right now. Ah, it's hard to memorize. You know, it's not your fault. Um, I just want to give it a shout out because uh, she's been there since the beginning. She's a sweetheart and she's super cool girl. And she's she's and been she, the backbone of everything. Yeah. Man. So her actual Instagram is forever underscore RVN. So forever Raven. Oh, forever underscore R R RVN RVN. Yeah, mm -hmm. and her tagline is like forever peaking, right? Because like we always like joke around like like we're peaking, like we're we're at the at the at like at, at the best of of what we can ever achieve. And every time I'm like, you know, like when we're talking about like being positive and being in a good place, right? I would always say like, like, Jess, we're peaking, like we're we're doing it, we're peaking, and then she goes forever peaking, like oh, you know, nice. like, like for it. the for our entire lives, we will be peaking, I like which that. which again, it's like you know this idea of like, there's gonna be ups and downs, right? We we might go down, but then we we're gonna go up, and once we reach that peak again, it'll be a higher peak than the last peak. Mm -hmm. And, and it's just a, another model to always, like, be mindful that, like, just, just I think it's just about tricking yourself that, like, things are always going to be better, right? Like, and, I mean, I, f I feel like that's what life is. Life is just whatever you experience in your head for however yes. long of your life, right? Like, so you create your own reality, right? Like, if, if you believe that, you know, that cup is green or that cup is blue, whatever you tell yourself in your head, like, that's true. So, you know, you could choose to, to tell yourself that, like, you're living your best life or you're living your worst life. Right. And I think that if you, if you, if you believe that you're living your best life, you're, you're going to foster more positivity and, you know, it's just like thinking abundantly and always like, you know, just looking for the best. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's so hard, man. It's a very thin line right there where we have to appreciate everything that we have to, we have accomplished already and be happy for the place where we are right now but not too comfortable assuming that okay we made it that's it this is you it, know yeah. it's kind of boring <laughs> yeah, you always gotta you got you have to be hungry i think you that... have to be hungry not starving because that's a bad state to be mm -hmm. but also no not so hungry or so driven to success that you kind of don't enjoy what you're actually doing some yeah. people and it happened to everybody. I would say it happened to me all the time. Where I, I'm so focused on keep going that for some time I don't enjoy what I already did. Mm -hmm. It's so hard for me to enjoy. It's so hard. Like, I own a tattoo shop, right? You know, mm -hmm. we know that, right? I should feel so happy, right? Mm -hmm. I already have my business. But for some reason, I never saw having a tattoo shop as a goal. Mm -hmm. It just, I needed to work. I need a place to work, you know, and working with other people's, under other people's ideas or ideals is hard. So rather you have your own place to work. That's it. That, that was my plan. I need a place to work. So yeah, I rent a place and work in that place. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It was never a, a goal to have it. For many people, those are goals. Mm -hmm. For me, it wasn't, I never really planned it. That wasn't the end result. It like, wasn't the end like, result. And I don't even know what is the end result because... With age, everything changed. Mm -hmm. And became becoming a father also changed a lot of my goals in life. Mm -hmm. And just my everyday simple things, like whatever used to get me angry, now I don't care about it. Mm -hmm. And part of that is Andres, my son. Mm -hmm. 
that teach me you know what i mean like yeah that doesn't really matter you know what i mean why you get mad if somebody caught you in the road and and flick you out or whatever like whatever you want i don't Mm -hmm. care you know your mind change a lot yeah before that was a good reason for me to just get upset you get upset and Mm -hmm. then be so mad for four hours yeah about this guy that come in the road now it doesn't matter yeah and before i used to feel like i want this big house with a pool and and yard for the dogs to run and my kids to play Mm -hmm. and whatever and that's kind of still in the back of my head somewhere like probably could be cool that's maybe a goal kind of a goal but this is the thing it's something like probably could be cool to have but at the same level or maybe a little higher in importance is like i want peace so i would rather probably need a small house in a place where i can rest and and be surrounded by things that i care like a little bit of nature a little bit of arts a little bit Mm -hmm. of my with my family of course but probably like a small place out of the town mm-hmm. where it's calm and relaxed is more attractive to me. Sometimes I feel like, oh, I should probably go to a little mountain in South America and live there <laughs> just for the peace. Yeah. But that's something that comes with the age. You know what I mean? Getting mm-hmm. older kind of change your mind a little bit. It doesn't mean that I'm not driven by success, su- success right? Mm-hmm. I don't, it doesn't mean that I... You just, the definition that plateau, of what... Or, or it doesn't mean that I don't care anymore about... It's working just, like hard or doing the right de- thing you redefine what it is that you want. what is like, important like, to yeah. me before maybe i thought oof one day i want to have a nice car and mm-hmm. then i have the nice car and then it's like whatever i don't i, I don't even think about the car the car is parked in my house and yeah, i don't think it. about it. i'm just thinking i want to paint i want to paint i want to paint i have more time to paint i want to have more time to paint you know what yeah. i mean or then another new project come to your life, like a podcast. You mm-hmm. know? You're like, oh, I wish. It, and also that happened to me all the time. It's not like I really dream on things that I want to have and then I make them happen. It's more like I I started it in a very, very cheery part in my life. No, nah, not even cheery. Like we weren't rich. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say we were poor. We didn't have money. That's it. Yeah. We didn't have money, but we ate every day. So it's okay. After some time of working, I came to America and it for a long time, you know, because, just because I didn't want to do construction for too long, whatever. So anyway, that's a boring part of the story. But the point, what I'm trying to say is that after some certain time being a tattoo artist, I became somehow successful and I was able to pay my bills without being worried about the next month. You know what I mean? And that for me was enough up yeah. to that point, right? Then you start like, I wish I have more. Yeah. But at the same time, it's, it's so hard to explain for me to explain this because the end goal, it was never I want to have a lot of money and be rich and have possessions and cars and gold and mm-hmm. never was that. It was more like I wish I can live doing arts, mm-hmm. right? And in that moment, it was painting. It was probably some point sculptures, but painting was my main thing. And that's what I feel like that doing is happy accident because I'm still doing art and I'm blessed by my clients that are fucking awesome that allow me to do the things in the way i like to do it mm-hmm. and and so i feel like i made it in that yeah like you found you found uh, an ability to live off of your creativity being creative yes. every day being creative and not being restricted to like to to do your creativity the way someone else wants to yeah. you can do it as you please and and people are happy with that yeah they're come to you and for still that. and still i have to respect my clients you know and do Pretty yeah. much what they want. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want to like, what I say, if they want a lion, I got to do a lion. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do no, a no, rock no, today gonna, because I'm, I'm an artist. You, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I still got to do the lion. But yes, yeah, definitely I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing drawings for life, you know, yeah. and getting paid for that. And mm-hmm. then you come with more, because now you're in a good state and you're in, in a better place where you're starting from to the yeah. next project. And then I decided to do the restaurants yeah. and then all of that stuff. But, and I lost the track of what, what this conversation started, why <laughs> this rank started it. But I would say that the, the main thing right now of all this idea for me is that I never have like a real final goal. It was more like I need to do what I like to do. Like, what, oh, I'm, yeah. you know, first I was just suffering, trying to find money to eat. Yeah. And in that stage, many people is right now and it's a very shitty place to start because you can hardly dream yeah. and and create goals and try to follow your dreams and your goals yeah. and make manifest to manifest yeah, yeah, yeah. that manifestation of things that you're dreaming with it's so hard when you're just trying to yeah. every day 
fight for for money, right? Yeah. For how what are we gonna eat today or no? You know, yeah. can I help my family or no? Yeah. Um, I think so. So I think that uh, I forget like the actual name of it, but it's uh, is it Maslow's law of hierarchy? I think that's what it's called, of like of of life, right? Like so, the first priority is like finding shelter and food. And then it's, or, or like finding food, right? And then the second thing is finding shelter. And then the other thing is like finding, like being loved and find, being comfort with like, I'm completely botching this whole thing, but mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's like a biology or a psychological term of like what humans like need in order to like live, right? So like, like to your point, like the priority was like, I just need to, to eat, right? Mm -hmm. And once you fulfill that need, you're like well like now i'm not like starving and i'm not i don't have to worry about you know whether or not i'm I'm gonna have food tomorrow then you kind of like you can focus on the next thing which is like okay like well now i need a, sh a shelter or i need a family or i need like to be supported by people and like and and then like it kind of goes on to the next thing and then one of the last ones is like finding fulfillment right like if you're hungry and you're starving and you don't have a place to eat and you're mm -hmm. in danger Like you don't care, it might, oh man, but I'm not fulfilled. Like, <laughs> yeah. like that's not like you know your priority. But if you if you're fortunate to get to a point where like you fulfilled all the other needs, you know, like as humans, we're always gonna want more, right? There's gonna be the next mm -hmm. thing, and then like I, fulfillment, I think is like one of the 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 pleasures or or one of uh, the uh, privileges that you know hopefully some you can achieve in life and that's kind of like you know to your point like i i feel the same way i have a i have a real i think i'm so hungry and i don't want to say desperate but i'm so hungry and i'm so driven and i want like i i want to find my success so bad that like um that that like right now i'm i'm like i'm like focused right and i'm fortunate that you know um You know, when Jess and I started the lab, what I told Jason was like, yo, Jason, if I do this, I have to live there. Like, I'm going to live in the attic. This is going to be one of those like stories that you look back at, like when an entrepreneur starts a business and they say, yeah, I lived in my friend's couches for like eight months. Mm -hmm. Like for, for us, that was the thing, right? Like I can't pay rent and then try to make the studio work. So Jessica and I, like, like literally, we we lived in the attic. Like, we I, re had I remember you told me that's a secret. Don't <laughs> yeah. know now you're saying that. Well, I mean, like, I, I, everybody knows. I think I think right now, like, it's you know, uh, you know, we're past it, right? I think that we can't get in trouble. Hopefully, we can't get in trouble for that anymore. But right, so like, like now we're fortunate. Like we're fortunate. Like we 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 can be in a place and, and we can be happy. We can have a home. And now, like, we can we can work on a studio, right? And and finally, you know, now that we also have Wilson, who's helping, you know, run the entire lab. He's um, you know, he's he's actually a registered nurse, but he's a super creative guy. Like he, you know, like he's a, a fantastic project manager, and he kind of, which is which is important because you have Jessica and I, who are both artists, who are like, oh, we want to paint, have fun, mm -hmm. and but there's there needs to be the other aspect of like, okay, well, like there's got to be an end goal, and we got to figure out a road, right? So Wilson helps organize and and, and make everything happen. Right. And now, like, we're finally in a place where, like, we've been able to actually kind of get some jobs and, like, actually pay for the bills. So now, like, you know, like, it's not all coming out of our own pockets to, to make the lab work. Right. But now we still want, like, that's not enough. Like, we, we still want more. So I think that, like, you know, like, I, from your conversation, like, what you're just saying, I think that, like, maybe sometimes we don't necessarily have, like, a, a certain goal. Like, I want a tattoo shop or I, I want, a, a a successful gallery right but like it's more maybe like what i've learned is that like you can have like a, a much bigger goal that's like way far right that like mm -hmm. you don't even know if you'll make it but it's just like something that's like a compass right and that's what we say is that like we want to turn norwalk into the art capital of the world so i don't i don't know if we can i, I think we could do that i think that you know like we i mean we can give our best fucking shot mm -hmm. like that's all we can do And it might not, and you know, like we don't, it's not about actually making it the art capital of the world, but it's just going in that direction because like in my lifetime, right. Going back to like, what do I want to do every day? Like, do I want to be an architect or do I want to turn Norwalk into the art capital of the world? Like if I get to choose, I'm going to choose the latter, right? Because to me, that sounds way more fun, way more cool. Mm -hmm. I would love 
to experience that way more, right? I don't want to be Frank Lloyd Wright anymore because, like, I, I can't be Frank Lloyd Wright. Like, you know, like... I, he was already. Well, he was already, but just to say that, like, you know, like, I think I was inspired by his creativity and his ability to do something so magnificent in the architecture world that has made an incredible impact, right? And today I recognize that I will never do that as an architect. Mm -hmm. Not that like I'm not going to be friend. Like there's, there's so many architects that I'm inspired by. But I know now, after doing architecture for so many years, that that's not really what I really want to do. It, that all started with like it was like a means to an end right like mm -hmm. i started architecture because i wanted to build cars right i didn't start architecture because i wanted to be the best architect once i st like every time i start something i want to be the best at it right mm -hmm. so that was my second my second step was like okay then maybe it's architecture and if i'm going to be architecture like i'm going to be frank lord right like i'm going to aim for that right mm -hmm. that's going to be my goal and then i recognized that like okay it's not you know, that's not actually what I want to do. I'm, like, what I actually want to do is make an impact and be the best at whatever it is that I'm doing. That's oh, what I recognize today, cool, right? Man. Yeah. So so now I'm applying that to, like, what, what I have today. Like, I'm trying to practice, like, being present and being grateful for, like, what I have. I think for, for like, the same thing, the example with, like, the cars and architecture was, like, wanting something that I had seen in the world and been inspired by and like I want that exact thing and recognizing that like maybe it's it's not what I what I want is not the thing but is like what it represents right so to to kind of kind of make it more actionable about today is that like you know I just I just want to create have a, a good impact and and do something great but now recognizing that like okay what am I actually good at what do I have today that mm -hmm. I can make that happen instead of being like well like I have a, I have you know like I have a studio like I'm making art I'm enjoying making art I'm enjoying making YouTube videos right and this is what this is what God has given me today to make something out of my life right so instead of like you know I used to be like well I have this but this is not this is not what I want I want this other thing so I'm just gonna throw all this out and chase some other thing I'm trying to practice like this is what I actually have this is what God has given me and I have this dream how can I make the two work Right. And trying to be grateful for what I have and, and trying to really tap into myself and recognize, OK, like what what do I have that I enjoy that I can dive into more and make more with that? Yes. I, I'm, I'm wondering. So you okay. said, right, um, based on what you just said, you said it's good to have this goal that even when it's a huge goal that might seem unreachable. For you, it's good to create those kind of unreachable goals that, that seem unreachable, but aim to the not to live frustrated because you haven't get there yet, but actually just to feel it as a gasoline in you system yeah, to a, keep moving motivator. you forward, yeah. motivator, move yeah. you forward toward that goal. Mm -hmm. From my point of view, I would say that's great, right? That everybody should try to find those kind of goals because there is no way for you to be happy doing what you like to do if you don't even know what it is. Yeah. So first try to find what what is you, your core, what you like to do, what you love, what you enjoy doing every time, right? All the time. It can be a hobby. Sometimes those hobbies that you have, it can become a career, right? Yeah. You you have to kind of focus your thoughts on that if you want to do it as a career. It's not like it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. Some people need to play safe. Some people need to like, um, I don't know, I just need my income, nine to... Well, the, the problem is that like most people, um, they don't. No, we good. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was like, a, I thought I, I unplugged a cable, but no, everything okay. is good. Sorry. Um, I think that like most people don't take the time to figure that out. I think that like in into yeah. like in today's world, like that's that's something I recognize, right? Like when I look back at my life and making my decision of like, I want, I'm gonna go into architecture even though what I truly want, like at that time in my life, I was working on cars and my girlfriend would be mad at me because like I would like be late to things because I was working on my car and my family would yell at me because I'm spending all the money that I make on my part-time job on my car and this and that and I need to, to create a career or whatever. And then like, you know, like I didn't recognize that like, okay, well, 
sure we all have to make a living have a family or whatever but what do i actually like how do i want to do that in my life how do i want to manifest that in my life and i think most people never take the time to sit in their thoughts and think about it and for the most for like for the most of my life i'm 32 now i think i i, I rebegan my life when i moved back to connecticut because i made a point of like you know like i'm sick of the life that i'm living like you know like you know the experiences in my head were always like kind of bad like you know like i'm not happy or i'm not satisfied with what i'm doing and and i just never had a direction where like even sometimes when i would try to think about what i want in my life i would like i wouldn't think about it like i would like you know oh no like i would like steer my my thoughts away because like i didn't want to i didn't want to think that like oh i can't do that or you know like i'm not even going to dream about this because i won't be able to do it or whatever right and and I imagine that a lot of people go through that because for me the transformation came when I'm like you know what like I need I need to figure out what it is that I want to do I can't just be like run like running full speed my entire life just to get to the end of the finish line and be like yo like this is not where I wanted to go I wanted to go in that direction mm -hmm. right and, and and again like the whole thing with the disappointment that's what it was like you know like I don't want to like. And I've learned a lot of this from like listening to so many books that like have inspired me is that like, you know, you have to have a direction because like, you know, like if, if you don't have a direction, any road will take you there. Right. So like, you know, you have to kind of, you know, and, and the other thing is that like it can always change. Like in my head, my goals, my ambitions, what I want to do with my life is constantly evolving, but it's constantly evolving because I'm just trying to figure out what it is that I want to do right like and like to your point as you grow older things change right but like i think that like as like if if we recognize that things will always change but you always have con you always have control of your narrative as long as you're putting work into figuring that out it will evolve but it will evolve and as it evolves you're still in control of that mm -hmm. right because like life is going to evolve either way and if you're not mindful of of where you're going life is just going to take you there. Right. Yes. And I think that like, that's like, you know, I think that like life, you can either create your life or life can just happen. Yeah. And I don't think that there's, there's a good or bad. Um, because sometimes I envious, I envy people that just like, like let I know. life happen because I'm like, wow, like I feel like I'd be so much happier or so and less frustrated <laughs> with myself if I was just happy and, and content with like life just happening. But for me, like, it's like, no, like, like I want these things to happen, man. Like yeah, I want to make my life happen. I feel like it's still life going to happen. And our job is to try to build in ourselves the most possible tools and, and knowledge to help life to happen in the direction that we want it to happen. Yeah. Like if you surround yourself by the ground crew, or if you don't do anything for your life, you find just a regular job that doesn't please you and you just go and do it because you need the money. But at the same time, you're not doing anything else, just coming home and waiting for the night to end, to go to sleep and come back in the morning out mm -hmm. to work. Then you're making it very hard for life to happen in a positive way. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's impossible. It's still luck can be there and, mm -hmm. and find you, you know, and make it happen for you. I feel like it's hard to try to leave everything to luck and just expect the best thing to yeah. be the outcome. Mm -hmm. So our best bet will be built in, in yourself the tools and the knowledge that will bring you to a point in your life that when life starts happening, you have something to offer back to that yeah. opportunity and that way your goals yeah. are more easy to yeah. also be accomplished right and that's what i was thinking in the line of thoughts that i was having that you said create that goal right to to be you your north star mm -hmm. like to guide yourself to that point but also you have to build a small goals easy to achieve mm -hmm. one to don't get frustrated because yeah. if you wake up every day thinking i can wait for the day that i can make turn the water into wine mm -hmm. and then just live for that one goal and just expect your life probably won't be as pleasant if yeah. you just focus on that one goal because a lot of things gotta be happening around you and you won't enjoy it mm -hmm. because that one thing that you waiting for is not here yet yeah but when you create small goals 
not just give you that certain that that sensation at least that you moving forward to that yeah like you're taking small steps you take a small step it, it also encourage you and give you more motivation more gasoline pump mm -hmm. you up to keep moving to the next step and the next step knowing that those steps have to one day take you to the final goal so yes important very important you find that main goal what you want to be what you want to do for life what you want to you already know what you're going to do for life but you might want to do something now for your community mm -hmm. how you help your community what can i do right i was trying to build an art school in venezuela where i came from but it's just so hard for the politics in venezuela and stuff like that mm -hmm. for me to do it but that was one of my goals that is so hard but that goal is independent of my main life let's say this is a side goal to try yeah. to give back to the community that saw me growing back in venezuela i don't let that to disappoint me and just keep my eyes open for the opportunity when it comes again for me to yeah. try to give back to Venezuela, right? To, to the kids or whatever, my community yeah. in Venezuela. But to the main goal, right? Like, okay, how I become an artist? I need to paint. I need to learn. I need to teach myself materials and utensils, uh, mm -hmm. tools and, and, and all of that, right? So, okay, I got to now be a better drawer. I have to draw twice a week at least, right? Mm -hmm. For me, it was like three times a day. It was like, I was super obsessed, but let's say that way, at least. So you have to create those goals. Then you see how your drawings start evolving. Now I need to do this. Now I need to do that. And achieve goals and achieve goals and, and, and celebrate them. No as a, okay, I feel actually good with this goal. I don't need to keep mm -hmm. following that other goal. No, because sometimes you gotta seem like, okay, that was a stupid goal. It was way too far. No, still mm -hmm. keep it there. Yeah. Don't throw it. Make another goal a little less crazy, a little, you know, you gotta in your way adjust. to go to this one. But once, the thing is that every time that you, uh, this is kind of like a video games, right? It's like yeah. every time that you unlock a new level, you feel so good, right? Like, ah, yeah. oh, I'm not already in that level, I'm already in this level. Mm -hmm. But from here, I only gotta get harder. It doesn't yeah. mean now it's so easy. Yeah. With this amount of, experience if you go back to the other level you're gonna kill it like no time yeah, super, easy. super easy and yeah. you're gonna be super comfortable you yeah. want that for you just leave the comfortable stay in that zone yeah no you have to know that at least i already accomplished all of this i enjoy it i celebrate it right i, mm -hmm. I have a super present in my in my, in my current time mm -hmm. but i still have to keep working for that final goal yeah and it's gonna be harder but if you keep going you gotta be able to yeah if you stop working and trying you won't yeah you know what i mean it, it, it's kind of like that like, yeah like games and stuff and that's life right yeah I, th that's exactly it i think that you know it's like it's constantly progressing and trying to always be better right because um you know i think what i like to, to think about it too is that like you know i always try to envision like who do i want to be like you know the version of myself like like if you if you think about the video game right like who do I, the version of myself that achieves the art capital of the world, what is that person capable of, right? That person is capable of like connecting people or, I don't know, working on social media or whatever, whatever, whatever is necessary for, for that, the skills and the things for that person to achieve that thing. And like, who am I now, right? So like, so, so for instance, like one thing that actionable to me, right? Super frustrating when I started the lab was like, like I have, I have to be a good leader or I have to, to learn how to like manage a business or like mm -hmm. just do taxes. Right. Cause for me, that's so frustrating. Like it's, it was so hard and so scary to like, to have to figure that stuff out or just registering a business. Right. And then when I get to that point, I'm like, well, you know, the successful artist that I envision myself to be, can that person, you know, register a business? Can that person file taxes? And if the answer is yes, then it's like, well, like, then I have to learn to do that. Like, you know, so it's like to your point, right? Like, like the next step, if I want to get to like the art capital of the world is like learning to file taxes, right? So, which is not glamorous or not fun no. or not like the craziest steps, but it's like, well, uh, I have to learn to do that. Right. And that's going to be hard. It's part of the process, right? man. But once I get to that point, you know, like it's going to be easy after that. Right. But the caveat is that like, well, after I achieve that, there's going to be something else. Right. So, and it's hard. Cause I mean, like, you know, it kind of, I'm, I'm a firm believer of, of the line that goes, 
the way you do anything is the way you do everything mm-hmm. right so to say like the way i approach learning how to do taxes is the way i approach my entire life right so to to say that like the way you go about a, like you know so, so to kind of go back to like our creative process right oh i want to do something i want to create a painting and i get excited about it and then i start and then i hit an obstacle and then i get upset and i get sad you know and then i have to push myself through that discomfort through that. Mm-hmm. right to grow and to achieve that goal right that process like is the way i do the most mundane thing but if you take a step back and you look that's how you approach your entire life mm-hmm. right because like if you're the person who gets to that obstacle and goes ah, whatever maybe it's not worth it i'm just going to figure something else out right then that means that you're always going to do that and in the, in the in the in your entire life anytime you approach anything any anytime you go to do anything like anytime you go to like make a bank deposit or you're going to try to make new friends or you're going to try to like do something for your significant other like you're probably going to approach all of those things in that same manner so i i chose to like put myself always in the position where it's like i'm always going to be doing something that's more difficult than i am capable of and i will have to learn to overcome that and then go beyond but then like it's gonna happen again and it's mm-hmm. gonna happen again it's gonna happen again so every step is going to be harder than the last and that that is the game that's that the is game. life but that's why it's so good to have the goal in mind yeah to then, have the goal not just in mind write it down and yeah. put it in the world oh put my it god in the that's the most important everywhere. thing if like, you don't write it, it down it's just a dream right yeah i mean i think like right I've been like really fascinated with the idea of manifesting. Mm-hmm. Like I used to think that like going back to environment, right? Where I grew up, like I love my family. I love my friends growing up, but I think that we all, we, uh, we all think differently. Right. And I've evolved and I kind of created a different environment around me. But I used to think that like the idea of manifesting or listening to self-help books was like, was for like crazy people or, or, for, pe- losers. or, or for losers. Right. Yeah. And that like held me back for so long. I felt so self-conscious about it until I, I like just like the whole when I, I decided to go all in on emotion explosion and explore the idea and like believe in the whole thing that I was telling people. I did the same thing with the books. Right. So I really started to believe in the idea of manifesting. Right. And I, I recognize that like if anything you want to do, like, you know, I've written like, you know, turn Norwalk into the art capital of the world in my journal so many times. And I feel like if I was to show this to like my family or some old friends of mine, they would laugh at me. Like, <laughs> like yeah. really? You think you can do that? But like if I, in having this conversation, like I feel like we're more aligned and, and you and you understand. So it's about really writing it down because it's like you have to find ways to trick in your mind and believe in yourself mm-hmm. and creating the support system that you need to, to manifest those things. Yeah, so, not, not just trick your mind to believe yourself, but... We need to let our brain know that we're going for this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the problem is that, again, our brain, one of the main jobs that I have is to protect us. Yeah. So whatever we start doing that makes us think too much, the brain is like, nah, fuck that shit. <laughs> why, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? Chill. Come Stop on, relax. Is hard. Get some food that we need some shit here yeah, to yeah, keep yeah. working and go and rest. You yeah. need to rest and you need to eat. Yeah. You never know when you have That's to go and run and hunt or and protect. go make a baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yes, please procreate because we need more humans. You know, we never know when that next shit is going to happen that yeah. we're going to, you know, be low in numbers. Yeah. That's your brain. Yeah. So you start like, ooh, I want to do this. And your brain right away going to be like, oh, no. Like, oh, I want to lose weight. That's one of my fucking battles every day, right? Um, And I know it sounds a little bad. That's my problem. Like, there is people with real problems, but anyway, that's one of my problems. It's mm-hmm. a real problem because it's my health, right? Yeah. So, but anyway, I'm like, yeah, I gotta do, I gotta change my way, my ways to eat, and I gotta exercise more. And right away, my brain is like, yeah, but today we can get some pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Let's wait until Monday. Yeah. And you're like, no, 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 no. I gotta, I gotta eat healthy this lunch. I gotta get some whatever old meat for my breakfast, and mm-hmm. and tomorrow I gotta go to the gym as soon as I wake up. And then you're like, you need to wake up that early. Come on, yeah. you're working hard. You instantly you start to like rest. trying right to like you push brain. yourself or like trick yourself to not do it, right? To don't do things that at the end are the great things for yourself, mm-hmm. right? Like pursuing goals in your life. That's 
yeah what it should I think, be I, right? think, I think that's that's like the joke of life that like and it's it's so hard to kind of deal with it because it's like anything that you want to do it is hard right like it's like like you know I mean I would love to to be a successful artist but like that's like to do that is the most the hardest thing that I can do right so like just like like you have a goal like oh like I want to have a certain like uh have either a weight goal or a health goal right which we know is 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 what's the best for us but the process is hard it's so yeah. much easier and comfortable to just hang out on a couch and not do anything right yeah. but like but you also like that's not going to take you anywhere right so it it, it and that's kind of like that's what's hard right because it's like there's a there's a anything that's good you have to work for yes but working is hard and sometimes it's not fun right so it's like that's what they call it work yeah right, right? so i feel like that's why i don't know i mean I, I, i feel like you know and i've been inspired by so many people all the people that i've read about that have achieved extraordinary things and and it brings me comfort because a lot of them say that you know like it just you know it get it gets easier but it's it's about like getting to a point where like you've done this so long that like it just becomes who you are right i, I believe that you can go from the person who always says okay maybe tomorrow and eventually like if you if you if you are consistent if you are if you do put in the work you get to the point where it's like like it it becomes easier to always yeah. say yes right um and and getting to that point is is not easy you know and i think that we can fluctuate personally i i fluctuated where like i'm in a place in my life where i'm killing it like i'm waking up early i'm doing everything that i need but then sometimes like sometimes maybe i burn out and it's like too mm -hmm. much and then like i fluctuate right so now it's like also like okay well like let's find a balance in it all like let's go for it and let's give it our all but us also let's like find a balance to where like you don't find yourself in a place where it's like you've gone too hard and you crash and then you got to start over. Mm -hmm. How do you balance your life, man? What you do, what you do when you're not working? I don't think I have balanced. <laughs> I think that like I, I'm at a place in my life where I feel like one, I feel like I'm early and I'm late. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I feel blessed that like I have everything that I have right now, but I feel like I've, I've achieved that in the late part of my life where like, you know, like I'm not in my twenties going mm -hmm. for it. Right. I think in my twenties I had like my, my dreams and aspirations were different. Like I was not really focused. I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was just living life and living for pleasure and trying to just like whatever. Right. And I think I have, I'm more purposeful with my life now. So I feel like I'm a little late to the game, but still, man, with 32 years old, you have accomplished a lot in life and, and you in there in a great path. To yeah, something but, because but, you have good goals. Meaning, when for for the artist mind, man, the mm -hmm. artist mind is always, oh, I want to paint, like you were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, ha, for the artist mind to sit and create a plan, like I gotta have this studio where more I can afford it myself, so I gotta get more people. And then you see, mm -hmm. oh, actually working with other people, I can do other projects and become a a uh, power ranger thing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? We're all together do just having that is a lot for an artist's mind because we always all over the place with our mind first because we really want to do art yeah. all the time and we hardly think about money yeah. and, and that's one of the biggest problems with the art community for, I think, for I ourselves think we, i think we've made it uh, not to go on a different tangent but i think we've normalized that like it's okay to just be a starving artist yeah it's okay that's to a just crazy like, concept man right and i think that like and that's part of what we're what i'm trying to change is that like i think in today's world there's so much room for like you know and i'm not saying like every artist has to be a millionaire right but like if if you're working a job and you're making fifty thousand dollars a year and you're not happy but you love to draw and you love to make paintings i guarantee you that in today's world you you can make the same salary working a creative job yes right it's or or, even or more that, money or or more money or maybe even a little bit less money but like you're living your dream right? yes and also is that kind of word that if if you put that work into it, it again it won't work for everybody but it's the same you can have 40 years of career in 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 a bank and you can get fired one day for any given reason exactly. or economic crash and you are and still it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you warranty for life if you have a secure job right now mm -hmm. but with things like art 
for example, tattooing in, in some, for some painters that I know and follow, it's a lot, <clears throat> nowadays, it feels this way at least, it's a lot in your hands. If yeah. you put a job, right now, you can start a year with $20,000. You can make it $20,000 a year. Let's say, for example, right, yeah. a number. That's not enough money to survive. But once you cross the line, that some people start recognizing your job and seeing it everywhere and stuff like that. Now you can probably make eighty thousand a year. Maybe yeah. in two years you can make a hundred fifty thousand yeah. or whatever. That any of those secure jobs gotta give you that kind of increasing. The, the problem income, is, you know, the problem is that like, uh, right? I think that the the problem is that like, there's an expectation that like you're gonna start and you need to immediately be work. Like so, for instance, if you're working on a bank job and you want to be a, an artist, right? And you're making $50,000 a year. It, there's, it, it's not justified to like quit that job and start making like $20,000 a year because it's like, you know, like I think that you people, like going people back don't see, yeah, or people don't want to give up like that in between. Like you'd have, you'd have to go from a comfortable place where we talked about, right? To a very uncomfortable place, right? Like for me, like not that I was like super comfortable, right? But when I started the lab, like, you know, I wasn't making a ton of money, but I was working at an architecture firm in Boston. Um, I was in the path where, like, you know, I could just continue that and continue to just my paycheck would just continue to, to increase. Right. Like I was what, making probably like 40,000 working with some, you know, living with some roommates in Boston. And, you know, I in the next five to 10 years, I could probably, you know, make eighty thousand dollars. Right. But right now to choose to go, OK, I'm going to quit everything. I'm not going to make any money. I'm going to go live with my mom and I'm going to figure my life out. Right. So I go from like on a path to making more to like starting over and being super uncomfortable, not only not having the finances, but. but 100 percent. Right. But not like, secure because no you don't security, know what is going to happen. But also like not having a direction in life. Right. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then the same thing. Then, then I was doing freelancing and then I was like and then I was doing Zumba and I was doing all these other things. And then I was like, well, I'm going to quit this stuff to start the lab. Right. And, you know, I'm I'm going to live in the lab. And, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, like so it's like, you know, people don't want to give up the comfort to be uncomfortable and start over because, like, they don't believe in themselves. They no, don't believe it's, that it's possible. Right. It's because hard, they don't man. they don't give it. I, I'm you know, I can't speak for everybody, but in my what held me back when I was in that place was that because I didn't believe in myself. I didn't believe that I could. Mm -hmm. I, I knew I wanted it. I still want it really fucking bad. But even there's, there's still some days where I don't believe. Like, how the hell am I going to make this happen? Mm -hmm. Like, can I make this happen? You know, like the days, like we're talking about the good days and the bad days. For me, that's what the bad days are. Like, like shit, like this is not, it's, I'm not there yet. Like, am I ever going to get there? Right? Yeah. Is this worth it? Like, should I quit? Yeah. Right? But it's like, to to get through that day right of downing yourself and being down in the dumps and not being happy getting through that and then thinking you know what like if this is the worst of it i'm able i can survive i'm alive right so whatever like i'll, I'll get through it and i'll keep going so so yeah and I, I think that like you know most people don't want to throw themselves in the fire yeah but it's, that's, because it's not easy man it's, it's not, not it's not easy it, Again, many people is starting from many different points in life, you know, and I don't know. Some people become a party when they're very young, so mm -hmm. they they cannot just say like, "Whatever, I gotta leave my kid with somebody to take care of him for a couple of yeah, years while I course. pursue my dreams." Yeah. At that point, you are a little more like, you "Okay, have other responsibilities, I need my yeah. Yeah, priorities switch." It doesn't mean that you can or you shouldn't follow your dreams. It just means different approach. That's all, yeah. you know. But it's hard to just jump. And if I have to advise somebody from a humble point of view, not like I know or mm -hmm. anything like that, I'm not, I'm not like a motivator or anything. I just, again, read and listen to a lot of stuff and try to apply it in my life. And some of them work, some of them didn't work for me, but it's been working for other people. But if somebody have like this kind of, oh, I want to be independent. I don't want to have to work in this job because I feel miserable and I feel like I can do a lot better on my own with this that I know what, how to do you still can pursue it without jumping like crazy you know, into it you know meaning for example let's say you you do cookies for mm -hmm. example I, I'm not gonna say just quit your job and start making cookies at home and selling them no don't quit your job keep your job yeah of course make the 
cookies in the night and trying to sell them to your co-workers mm. first yeah you know and then ask them to sell them to their friends and help you in that way for example or, or create a website or create a, a instagram page a tiktok and start promoting your cookies there mm -hmm. and and try to be busy out of that and, and save money mm -hmm. you know and, and then when you start selling enough find a way to put in the local supermarkets or stores where yeah. they want natural things homemade or, or, or organic or whatever it is you yeah. know what i just i just talking out of my ass right now no like i have this plan i probably gotta do cookies now for <laughs> sure i kind of like the idea <laughs> but you know what i'm saying like like first of all realize or recognize where you are and who you are and if that's what it make you happy you made it you yeah. know don't don't you don't need to change it because mm -hmm. why would you change something that make you happy yeah at least that you want to evolve from there on you know mm -hmm. grow but if you already find it whatever but if you didn't if you are not there that options for you you mm -hmm. know you just have to go for it yeah what way to do it first of all realize where you are who you are what you want for you and, and you family or below or below ones or whatever and create that goal yeah. write it down it's, it works it's really work just yeah. write it down you know i want to be a cookie maker and live out of cookies mm -hmm. and and make it as big as possible if you want like one day i gotta be the competition for any company or i want to build it. create that big goal something but don't go greedy don't go cheaty don't go like i gotta fuck every other company in the world and make them suffer for yeah. the pain they cost me when i wanted a cheaper cookie they, no yeah. it just build yourself for what you really make make you happy you know? yeah create that goal and then automatically start breaking it down into smaller goals go, what, how i get there i need to it first have first cookies step, yeah. i don't know even how to make cookies i yeah. like cookies but i don't know how to make them yeah. or, or that who do you think you know that recipe your grandma teach you mm -hmm start making it how now making bigger months so start learning in the internet how i promote myself how i create a brand how google a yeah. lot of information out there for free nowadays in youtube you know yeah what should i do to get this or there or whatever and and, yeah. and start you know oh then you in some point got any more money how i find investors what is the best way should i find somebody that take all my money when this mm -hmm. thing explode how i learn about that just learn and put yourself there and do little goals little by little yeah. you know and, and if it's a big chance that it can happen i'm not saying it's gonna happen again it won't happen for everybody because it depends on many 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 variables yeah. but you'll never know if you never try if you never try and put you work put your soul into it yeah that it, it happened for so many people that mm -hmm. why it wouldn't happen to you you know yeah you know what i mean yeah 100 percent. yeah but but definitely again it's hard for some people to just yeah. to tell people just quit your day job and just jump into your dream because yeah. they're going to happen to you? Nah, don't well, do it. Well, it probably if, won't happen. Yeah, to I think I think for me, it was more like, you know, it, it's, it's, I think it's, it's having the patience. It's like, you know, again, it's like to not have that expectation, but to say, okay, well, I'm going to start um, and it doesn't have to look exactly like I, I need it to happen, mm -hmm. right? Like, so, you know, it does. I don't have to be, I don't have to make my first cookie and be, you know, selling in Walmart, yes. right? It's like, you know, like if, if you are in a situation where you can't just quit everything and go there, it's just like you just have to start and just, you know, mm -hmm. it, this is the first step. And then, you know, have some goals like okay, the next step is like, I just want to sell. I just want to learn how to make 50 cookies, you know, yes. and, and how to keep yeah. it all consistent. And they're good yeah. and they're always good and they always taste the same. Mm -hmm. And also keep in mind that you got to find those blockages and you, you know, those obstacles and you, yeah. you got to hopefully you want. Yeah. But man, but you that's hard. Will. <laughs> you most likely will find yeah. even, even again, some of them are created by your brain. Mm -hmm. Oh, why would somebody eat my cookies? Yeah. If there's so many cookies out there, and why, there why is, is no reason I'm gonna sell a cookie. Yeah. There is no reason that people gotta buy mine. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You yeah. you always start with those thoughts coming and coming and coming. Yeah. Again, it's your brain trying to protect you mm -hmm. to don't do shit that might get mm -hmm. you in danger. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Or out of the comfort zone. But just keep going through yeah. that. Just keep going through that. And once you pass that, you got to see like, ah, a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> you right. You were tricking exactly. me, right? Yeah. And then you're in the next side. And then it doesn't mean it's successful now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not that you know, okay, I can keep going with this plan. I can yeah. keep going with this plan. And most of the time, it's about consistent, being consistent, being consistent. Keep going, keep going. Give that time. Wait for the people to get to know your product mm -hmm. or, or, or your brand or your name or your music or, or, mm -hmm. or, or whatever you do, right? Yeah. Just keep going and keep doing it. Again, it's no warranty going to happen to everybody, but if 
you increase the chances by a lot yeah. trying it. Yeah. I mean, you create your own luck, right? I think that like luck is never going to knock on your door if you're not doing anything. But if you're out there like trying different things and, you know, you're exploring and you're not afraid to fail, like there's, you know, like there's going to be more opportunities for luck. Like if you're just sitting on your couch, how is luck going to knock on your door? But if you're out there like trying a bunch of different things and just trying you have more opportunities for yeah. luck to come and, to you. And also, I don't know if you have, exp I'm, I'm pretty sure you have, but also is this beauty that when you kind of get yourself out of the comfort zone and you start accomplishing, accomplishing even little goals, your brain kind of open. Yeah. And now you just seeing opportunities everywhere. Yeah. And now you're learning about other stuff in front of other people. And now you feel like, oh, now that I'm doing this, even when you got some money, it doesn't mean you're rich. But mm -hmm. again, you're not so worried about what I got to eat today. Mm -hmm. And now you, you for example, create your cookies. People is liking it. But now you're like, oh, maybe I can take some of this money of these cookies and try this other idea that I yeah. thought once about writing a book of recipes or, mm -hmm. or about doing this other stuff. And now you can start experimenting with, yeah. oh, I'm a tattoo artist, but let me do a podcast now mm -hmm. just to talk to people and learn more yeah. because I don't have the time to learn what I'm tattooing. Let's yeah. say, for example, right? Yeah. And, and then you just go to that next goal and start learning new stuff. And, and, and I didn't stop tattooing to do podcasts. Even a couple of people commented it on my photos like, what, you're not tattooing anymore? Now you're doing just podcasts. No, I'm <laughs> tattooing. Just, I don't post photos every day as I used to. Mm -hmm. Many projects are just starting Mm -hmm. You know, in the beginning stage, they don't look yeah. too good to just post incomplete tattoos. So I'm just not posting so much. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the point is that I'm trying to do other stuff with my time. I explore that restaurant where I have the little restaurant mm -hmm. in Norwalk. Uh, it, you know, but again, where, where I was, let's say 14 years ago before I started tattooing and all that, I couldn't never like really see and do like i gotta do this and do that i was mm -hmm. so struggling every day to pay yeah. my rent to get my car fixed because it was always broken and, mm -hmm. and to eat you know yeah um but yeah that, that, the thing is that just start mm -hmm. find what you like and start yeah. and when those i blockage come just try to go through yeah. that and put your heart and you might make it yeah. at least you have more chances that if you don't do anything at yeah. all it might not work. You might get a little sad that it didn't work. Yeah. But but I think that that's something to be comfortable with, too. I think that's something I was never comfortable with was, like, failure. failure? Yes, yeah, so because important, I felt like, man. Oh, if I fail, like, I'm not good enough. And I, I'm at a place where I feel like, like, I'm, I'm, I try to look back and, okay, where did I fail? Just so I can understand that, like, it's okay to fail, right? Like, oh, yeah. like, I, I set a date to, like, meet an artist and that artist didn't come. Oh, like, that's a failure okay, that's okay. Like, you know, like, well, I'm going to try to meet that artist again, right? Or I'm going to have a solo show. Oh, wow. Like, you know, I didn't have enough work. I had to postpone the, the solo show. And and instead of being like, wow, like, I'm such a loser. I'm a failure. I can't do anything. It's like, shit, I failed. Okay, like, so how do I get back up? How do I redo this? How do I, like, you know, s set a new goal? Just because, I, you know, in the beginning, like, where I came from, I just felt like, if, if you can't, if you're going to fail, that just means you're not good enough. You can't do it. Right. So I think yeah. that like, such a run. Yeah. And it's, it's being more like comfortable with the fact that like, you know, what, like go out there and fail, fail on purpose. Like just try to like get comfortable with the idea because like we're saying, right, you're going to come to obstacles and you're going to fail. Like you're going to, and that doesn't mean like you're going to go out of business or, and again, none of this has to be about all oh, just business. It can be family. Like, I'm just trying to be a good dad. I'm trying mm -hmm. to, you know, I have no experience with being a dad. But like, <laughs> I'm imagining that like, let's say, oh, wow, like there's something wrong in your relationship and you're trying and it, ke it keeps not working. Like then, then keep trying it until it works. It's okay to yeah. fail in anything. Take your time. Sit yeah. down and think what I'm doing wrong. Something, something is not right mm. if it's failing. Sometimes you might be pursuing something that wasn't for you at all and, and that would make it fail. Yeah. But failing is necessary and it's so good for you yeah people have to stop feeling like failing is bad yeah failing is just part of the process man and mm -hmm. if you is, is striving if you're trying to reach hard things you for sure gotta find failure yeah. in that way you just have to learn how to yeah suck it out come back up yeah. and keep moving forward yeah You're, you have to just you cannot be also uh how you say it? uh Reckless, 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 like yeah. just 
whatever. I feel like keep going and keep not. No, no, you have to stop and see what you is have going to on. Learn from the if you just you have to learn you have from to the like, failure. Uh, that's what you like. That's what you get from it. Like and if that you what fail, is so important. you learn, right? Yes. Like you learn, like failure, like is learning how to not to do something, right? Because because I, I I heard this somewhere that they said that like, you know, like that's where wisdom comes from. Like if you just mm-hmm. fail and you learn nothing from it, and you keep going. I guess that's reckless, right? But if like if you fail and you take a second to actually like learn from it, then then that's the best thing that can come out of it because now you have the tools. Again, you're building those tools to 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 go on to the next thing, so that hopefully you don't you don't fail at that exact thing again. You learn from it and you can go on to the next thing, and maybe you fail at the next thing. But then you learn that, and it just keeps building up. Becoming a father is tough stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Because something that I, something that I'm not happy with, or that I always criticize, I don't know, criticize or whatever, is that 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 thing that nobody loses. Everybody gets a trophy when mm. kids are playing sports and stuff mm. like that. That's so wrong, man. Oh, but I don't want them to feel bad, you know. They're, no, they lost. They lose. So <laughs> fucking loser, you lost. The other thing win. They did better than you. Just work keep harder. Practice and more harder time. and try. You might never be as good as other people. That doesn't make you lesser. You know, mm-hmm. you you might be better than them at something else. Uh, yes. You know what I mean? But if you lose, celebrate that other people won because they you know, they they did hard work or, mm-hmm. or they did better that that one day or, or or try to realize what happened with you or your team while you guys lose. You weren't playing your best game because mm-hmm. you were being selfish, no a team, whatever, mm-hmm. right? Whatever it is. You need more practice, you knew newer, whatever. But if you just give trophy to everybody, everybody gonna be like, Whatever, I don't need to do better, I gotta get a I'm trophy anyway. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna go for peace after the game. So who cares? <laughs> I'm not gonna try. You know what I mean? Yeah. So So we agree, right? It's not yeah. right, it's not good. But when you are a father, mm-hmm. then you feel like so cheated. Like you don't want your kid to lose and feel that 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 the mm-hmm. horrible sensation of seeing everybody happy and you like, oh my god, I didn't yeah. win. It's hard, man. Right so there. you also have to kind of go through that kind of mm-hmm. fucking loser. Shut up. <laughs> no, no, I, don't, I don't call my son a loser. But you know what I mean. But, yeah. but I, I like he playing with his cousin sometimes and both your games whatever it is and he feel like oh he plays better than me like yeah because he's big at all he try harder just try harder you know mm-hmm. you're gonna be better yeah. one day you know yeah. i'm better than you <laughs> but it doesn't mean that i'm superior i just have more years experience doing drawings for example yeah. right he frustrated because he cannot draw as i do i'm like you're crazy bro i'm 45 you're just five it's 40 <laughs> years of difference come on stop it but but some part of you you don't want him to be sad for yeah. losing Mm-hmm. And you kind of grow in a world that make you feel like if you lose, it's negative. Yeah, you're worthless. You yeah. know what I mean? Something wrong with you. Mm-hmm. Why you even try that if you're gonna suck at that? Yeah, bro, come on, that's so wrong. You know. Yeah. But when you are a kid, you grow in the environment where is how you kind of grow. That why you even try if you're not good. Mm-hmm. But actually, those moments are the good teaching moments when you were your friends growing up at least when i grew up in the 80s in venezuela if you're not too good of course sometimes your friends make fun of or this or that but you always trying to compete with them and become better and next time you know what i mean don't be so bad or or, mm-hmm. or learn new move when you're playing soccer in the streets or whatever and then and then you become a little better and then they celebrate you then you fuck it up then they point fingers at you and they celebrate whoever wins so you kind of learn like okay I gotta be better if I wanna be celebrated you know that's important and then you grow I feel to say it maybe simpler it's like sometimes we don't even feel bad of ourselves for failing of is that constant ideal in the back of your head or this situation in your brain going on that you don't want to be judged by other people for yeah. your failures that you don't want people to to, to look at you make fun of you you're look you down you're, you're a loser you. oh, why are you trying you tried to open that tattoo shop and it didn't work you worthless no i told you you should you i told kept you your job. You know? yeah you know what i mean all yeah. those kind of things are in your mind all the time and it shouldn't it shouldn't i mean again if you really try to reach something that is huge it might be a lot of failures in the road there. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that each of those failures have to de- 
determine determine the, determine determine who you really are yeah. or what the thing is is just part of the process. I think again, how you respond yes, says how more you about respond. you than like the actual failure. For some people, they're gonna do projects in their life that gonna come super smooth all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. Good. I wish it was like that all the time for everybody, mm -hmm. but then probably everybody will be up there and and nobody will you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Will be in bad points right now in the life. But the norm, the most common situation is that you gotta find hard points in your life. Sometimes not even real. Sometimes yeah. you created it yourself. But plenty of times it gotta be actually obstacles in, in, in your way, right? Mm -hmm. I wanted to open this tattoo shop right here because I love this location. It's too close to a school. You cannot open places in tattoo shops close to a school because it's a regulation for that. Oh, I don't know that. I don't know either. I'm just take, making shit of my ass. <laughs> Again. No, no. I I learned that from South Carolina when I was once there talking mm -hmm. to somebody that wanted a tattoo shop there. Oh, okay. I was like, why you put that tattoo shop so far from the mm -hmm. that area that is so nice that no, it's not legal there because it's a school close, so you oh, cannot okay. do it. I don't know. If, I don't think Connecticut has that kind of regulations, but I don't remember anymore. I read all those regulations and stuff when I opened the shop, but I don't remember it. But certain rules happen that they're, they're real things in mm -hmm. life, you know? Oh, I want to do that, but I don't have this. Or this is illegal or this is not mm -hmm. possible. So, yeah, you find just find your way. You, you have know? to move around it. Move around yeah. it and, and find the ways. But you probably all got to find things in, you, in your way. Just yeah. find a way to overcome it and keep moving forward, yeah. right? 100%. Don't be afraid to lose. You yeah, got to probably I, find I some think points. You're definitely, you're definitely going to come through the challenges. You're get, definitely going to, like, lose some battles. I think it's just, again, it's just... To me, it has been about learning the mindset so that when I come across these moments, because they're going to happen, is how am I going to respond? Am I going to be down on myself or am I going to find a way to make it positive and then go, go through it, right? Like in everything that we've done and like opening the lab and, you know, like in going through college and trying to figure out what I'm going to do or make, you know, like there's been so many times where I've, 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 I've come across the world and I felt like I've, I've reached the end, but I had to find something else, right? Like when I first opened the lab, you know, I, I made the decision and I was about to sign the lease and then I backed out and I was like, no, I can't do this. This is going to be too much money. I don't know how to do it, you know? And then Jessica like encouraged me and like, you know, supported me and, and, and said like, you'll, you'll find a way. We'll find a way. Right. So, I mean, I, I could have, you know, like just signing that lease, like was Imagine was that. scary, right? Like I was like, what am I gonna do? I'm signing a lease, and like, you know, like, you know, like, it's it's incredible, you know. Like before before I even started the lab, there was a time in, when I was in Boston that, you know, talk about failure, right? I had a, I had an idea to start a different business while, while I was in Boston. It was called Yeti. It was basically like a, a a shoveling service for snow. Like if you know, like you you'd call this service if um. It, you know, if it snows and you want your car clean before you go to work, you just call that number. And then, like, instead of you going out there and cleaning your car, it's clean and mm -hmm. you just go to work. Right. I thought I still think it's an amazing idea. I think it's a great idea. Right? It's, it's just how you market it, because every time there's snow, I want to call somebody exactly, to come like, and clean my car. And, and especially like, you know, I mean, it's a little bit different in, in, in Norwalk. But when you're in a big city like like Boston or, 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 or New York, um, you know, like it it's you're parking on the street and that's the street. a huge hassle so i think that like it makes perfect sense but then like you i i told everybody that idea right and then like some people are like yeah but then like you have to worry about insurance we're like what if you scratch the car or what about in the summer what are you going to do in the summer right so then there's all those things and then like it, uh, that goes back to the environment of people either like you know like looking at the, like good there's the there's a pe there's a person who thinks of an idea there's two types of people one person will look at an idea and see obstacles the other one will see opportunities mm -hmm. the person who sees obstacles will always be behind because they're always trying to like figure out the obstacles the person who sees the opportunity like right now if we're talking about the same idea i see an opportunity of creating like a market and creating a business that provides a service that if done well could explode right mm -hmm. Obviously, there's going to be obstacles. I have to figure out insurance. I have to figure out what you do over the summer. Like, do you have to do it? Like, all those things, right? But 
if you focus on the opportunity, you can overcome the obstacles. If you look at just the obstacles, you miss the opportunity. Like, yes. I'm not going to do this just because there's obstacles. Well, there's, there's going to be an obstacle no matter what you do. Right? If you're trying to find something to do that has no obstacles, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I cannot imagine something yeah. right now. So, so, it, 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 so that's the thing. And, then like, and, and you are going to fail. There are going to be crappy times. But... You know, you have to continue and and to, to circle back. Well, that was a failure for me. Like, you know, I was in Boston. I, I didn't have the right people around me to, to put it together. I didn't believe in myself. Um, you know, I was anxious. I was scared. And uh, and and then that's actually like I moved to Connecticut at that point. And after a while, my friend, like within a couple of months, um, my friend sent me a message that someone had started that same business in Boston and mm -hmm. they they had the same exact name. So oh, yeah. so in my head, it was like, what's happening? Like, did someone take my idea? And I was super upset. But in any case, like, to me, that's a failure, right? Because this great idea that I, I still believe it's a great idea. I wish I could still pursue it, but, I you know, know, there's only so much you can do. But... To me, that was a failure. That was an idea that I had that I, you know, it's, it doesn't exist. I don't put energy towards that anymore. But I've learned so much from that. Like, right, if I didn't, like, try to register that business, I wouldn't have known what to do with the Mad Lab. If I didn't try to, like, create a brand for that business, I wouldn't have known what to do with the Mad Lab, mm -hmm. right? And I wouldn't have the confidence to do what I've done, right? Like, Very you know, importantly, too, if you, if you, Golden, see and recognize that maybe the people surrounding you weren't the great, great advisors, supporters. And if you haven't failed on that one without even trying hard enough, mm -hmm. like now you're in the other side knowing those mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not just the fact that you learn something good about how to install or register the business with the state, the city, the federal, mm -hmm. order, but also recognizing that okay maybe i didn't try it enough that's learning all of that's i just learned i had the potential like you know honestly I mean? like i i learned that like i can do something right like yes. i have the potential to to start something you and know even, what was my idea what? similar to that one that i didn't do and then i saw it happening so big and i was mm -hmm. like Fuck, why you like why i don't know how to do do those things mm -hmm. uber eats really yeah back in the day I talked with my brother, like, it should be good to create a... And I, w I was, of course, thinking locally. But mm -hmm. most of the time, big, big ideas start small locally. And once it start working, you add up. If not, ask Amazon. Yeah, The guy right. starts selling books in his house, his books, then his neighbor books, and then suddenly he's a billionaire, yeah, right? Now he's in Almost the moon. trillionaire. Yeah, now he's <laughs> going to the moon, soon going to be in Mars. And yeah. I don't know. One of these days, Saturn or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the point is that... I was like, man, it's so shitty that every time I want to eat something and I want to call for delivery, it's either Italian or Chinese mm -hmm. food, right? There was nothing else. Back then, I don't remember any other people. One or other restaurant has their own drivers, but then you have to call, hey, do you guys deliver? Oh, today the driver is not here. To Whatever. Always a hustle. Mm -hmm. like if you try to get Mexican food or something, it was always a hustle. Imagine if you try to get something like Barcelona or whatever. They don't have deliveries. They don't care about that kind of business. Mm -hmm. It's not the business model, right? So I was always saying to my brother, I, I, I want to hire a bunch of my friends. Back then, I didn't have money. I was working construction, shitty cars. So I was mm -hmm. just always trying to think about planning. Yeah. I was, always I thinking about opportunities. Always I want to hire a bunch of my friends that have no like good income and stuff. They have car. Even hire people that already drive for peace areas. But have them outside of them. So they don't work for the pizzeria. They work for this company where people call me, you know, to order food mm -hmm. from a place. I didn't know how to manage it, but that was kind of my idea. Yeah. So if you want to order from a place, either you call the place and they once they take the order, they call me, come pick an order here for that place. And I yeah, call. Yeah. Or they call me, or they through me, and mm -hmm. I, I, I make the order to the, the restaurant, restaurant mm -hmm. and pick it Again, maybe it wasn't the greatest idea back then. It was not apps. Mm -hmm. in the cell phones like now yeah. i'm talking about probably 15 years ago again no facebook nothing of that was big okay. so i was just trying to think about the idea and, and then i was like ah, that's just too hard yeah how gonna make that happen i don't even know how to start so fuck it yeah and then a few years later uber is comes and it's big and i was like yeah ideas are there you have to find a way to make it work man yeah but but i think the incredible thing is that like 
right? It's not even about that one idea. It's about the fact that like you're you're constantly looking for ideas, yeah. right? Like the fact that like that idea somehow led you to the tattoo shop or it led you to your restaurant or to whatever it is, you know? Because you know, out of all that the ideas that didn't work, there were some that did. Yes, and definitely. Nowadays, I said to my brother always, uh, or sometimes to my wife, when I watch TV, for example, I don't, I don't, I don't have so much time to watch TV. <clears throat> I don't want to sound like I'm super busy. It's just that when I'm in the shop, I'm tattooing. And I don't want to impose on my customer what I want to watch. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather let them watch whatever they want. Or we play music or, or listen to podcasts or whatever, right? When, when I'm tattooing. Um, but sometimes I said to my brother and my wife, nowadays I just like to watch Family Guy or American Dad. Mm-hmm. Not, and when I say right now, I mean probably the t- two years back, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because during those shows is when I'm not really thinking about what is going to be my next yeah, project. You, you can actually like so now, turn off. Yeah, it's so dumb, that show, uh-huh. that it helped me to <laughs> turn off my brain and don't look for opportunities. Because yeah. if I try to, I used to like like those shows that they remodel houses. Yeah. Right? When I was working construction and I was always like, oh, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do that. Oh, okay. Maybe I cannot remodel a full house, but I can offer the service, the person that got to do this or that. Yeah. And what if I find companies who do stuff? And what if, what if, what if? Yeah, and yeah, always, yeah. man, whatever I was watching, or uh, pawn houses, or uh, pawn houses, uh, whatever, reality TVs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what if somebody can buy this and sell it there? What if I do this? Man, all the fucking time, the yeah. brain's working. Taka, 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 taka. Um, I wanted to create an app to do tax sales and app. Mm-hmm. Probably there is tax sales apps already. Or, or if not, you have Marketplace and Facebook or stuff like that. It's kind of similar concept. But I wanted to do that. I never did it. Probably it's also a good idea. Never know. But the point is that just watching TV, I don't rest. I'm yeah. just like, taka, 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 taka. It's sometimes it's exhausting. Yeah. No, my mind is always going. I think, I think that's kind of like the creative mind i think i think so yeah to me that's kind of like a curse it's a, it's a blessing and a curse i actually mm-hmm. made a, a, a painting about it because i called it the do you boo boo jail because you know my whole pro my do whole th- you boo boo jail yeah because so what one thing that i do like for me i'm always trying to ins- I, I i've learned to not try to inspire people i've learned to inspire myself mm-hmm. because if i focus on like i can't control other people i can control myself right in my own reaction so I decided with my art and everything that I do, I'm going to do it for me. Like I want to inspire myself because if I'm successful inspiring myself, there will be other people who inevitably will connect with me and will be inspired as well. As Mm -hmm. as opposed to like, I'm going to try to inspire Javier. I'm going to inspire myself and maybe Javier will connect with me and be inspired or he will not, but there will be people who Mm -hmm. will. So that's my, like my motto, my tagline is just do you boo boo to always just, be authentic to yourself, you know, everything we've been talking about. I've know. seen the painting you do about the boo-boo yeah, with so, the word boo-boo in it. Yeah, that's kind of like, that's like the, that's like the, the nucleus of everything that I do is to just, it's what we've been talking about, right? Like, what do you mean about with boo-boo? Boo-boo, I, it, for me, a boo-boo is a little scratch in my son's knee. Yeah, so, but boo-boo can also be like a, like a nice term to like, like a affectionate term to somebody like, hey, how are you, boo-boo? Like, oh, you know, okay, you're my okay. boo-boo. Like, you're my... Okay, okay. Right, so for me, it's a, a nice... I hear, I hear sometimes girls calling the... Yeah, like, oh, this, my this, boo. Is my boo. this is my boo. Yeah, yeah right? So it, it's kind of like a funny, like, way of, like, you know... um And I don't know, like, I, I don't even know if I can take full credit, of, like, coming up with the phrase, but I think the way I've adapted it is definitely original to myself. But, you know, there are people sometimes who are, like, we'll have these conversations, right? We'll get into... Because I love having conversations like this. And some people might say, like, you know, I don't know what to do. Like, should I do this or should I do that? So for me, it's always like, do you, boo-boo. Like, oh, whatever okay. it is that you want to do, like, in answering that question for yourself, just try to be as authentic as possible. What's going to make you happy for you, mm-hmm. not, like, for other external reasons? So <clears throat> so I made a piece. You know, a lot of my pieces actually have that saying in it. And then there's like other themes intertwined into the actual artwork. So one, I made one called Do You Boo Boo Jail. So it's like, it's the word Do You Boo Boo. Jail like prison? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and everything that I do is actually like super, very colorful. Always mm-hmm. like super bright colors, like so very saturated just because I think that like, I just 
ah, like that, that's how <laughs> that's how I want my artwork to come out. Like I just want it to be like screaming at you, like demanding your attention. So this one says, "Do you boo boo?" There's there's these colors, but there's also these like dark black lines that come across it that almost look like jail bars. Mm-hmm. So and coming back to what we we're talking about, all the, having these ideas and your brain always going. For me, it's a duality that I, I think about, right? Like, right, and also talking about being successful, trying to manifest your dreams, trying to manifest your life. You know, I've I've always been in a place in my life where like there's always so many ideas, there's always so many things that I want to do, which for from a creative standpoint is fantastic, right? Like this river is always flowing, but the problem is that like I will never catch every fish, mm-hmm. right? And and for the longest time, I've I've felt like that was a a failure, right? Uh, That like I will never be good enough because I will never be able to do everything, Mm -hmm. right? Or be the best, or be the best at everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like you know, like imagine trying to be an artist, trying to be an architect, trying to like run the Mad Lab, uh, trying to do a podcast, or trying to do a mobile app. Like I would never be able to do that. And for the longest time, I've, I've I've, I've always, I, I used to think that that was like a bad thing, right? Like I'm not good enough or I'll never achieve anything because I can't achieve any of these things. Mm-hmm. So it was a way of trying to kind of put this all into like perspective and understand that like, you know, this is the reality is that like I will always have too many ideas and I will never be able to do all of them and recognizing that that's okay. That like there will be a graveyard of dead ideas that never come to life, but to not focus you'll on never that, know right? right anyway right but to not to focus on that graveyard but to in in essence be grateful for the few ideas that do flourish and that become amazing mm-hmm. right so because because again like you my brain is always going right and i'm always like on a day-to-day basis it's hard to focus on on doing anything because i just want to do so many things Right. And to me, it's sad that I can't do everything. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, that's why for me, it's kind of like a jail. It's like a prison. Right. Because it's like inside of like that idea. Those ideas will never come to life. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is there is a Colombian um, Nobel Prize writer. Mm-hmm. He died a couple of years ago. Uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Very well known in the world. Um, so he got mm, this book is called. I don't know what is the word in spot in English, peregrino. I would say it's uh, like the like the water. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Peregrino, peregrino, peregrino. I, I don't know what is the word. In, maybe it's the same word in English. What is it? Is you know when people used to live back in the days in East Coast and they took Pilgr- horses and moved all the peregrines. Oh, peregrines? oh pilgrimage. Like Pe- when you go from one place to another to the other place. place. Yeah. Like uh, make, what is the word? Pel- pilgrimage. Pilgrimage. Okay. It's like, like a pilgrim. A pilgrim is a someone pilgrim. who goes like from person this is a place. pilgrim, right? Yeah. So it's like 12 pilgrim, pilgrims, pilgrims tales or something mm-hmm. like that. It's the name of the book. The point is that he said that over the year, he, because he's an amazing writer, he grows these short books or, or, or stories or whatever, but he never was pleased about them and throw them away. But mm-hmm. at some point he found some of those and put them back and, and then he realized they actually has an interest in life by themselves. Mm-hmm. So he put them together in a book called The Twelve Peregrine Stories mm-hmm. or whatever. And it's that kind of idea that something that right now might not sound so good to you as an idea, it might have a lot of potential and it's good to always have it there. Mm-hmm. So I know we're talking about having too many ideas and yeah. being a great course almost, not being able to rest your brain because you're always thinking about ideas. Mm-hmm. And instead of me saying stop thinking about so much i'm saying just keep thinking about it writing down and putting aside that my mm-hmm. day either they're gonna become more noticeable as a good ideas or you find better tools in your life yeah. or be surrounded by more people in your life they're gonna help you to develop them or yeah. find the potential yeah it's like it's a, it's, a, it's not the right time might, might not yeah. be the right time yeah either because that seems to be too hard or too not good mm-hmm I don't know if that's actually grammar correct saying too no good, but whatever. Um, or you're just busy, right? Yeah. And at some point, you might find people you like around it. Or you said you're going to find yeah. more time to, 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 you know, revive those ideas and, yeah. and work with them again. Yeah. Give me one second. I need to take a leak, man. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> if you need, it's about right there. Okay. Oh, man. Awesome, man. 
You're doing like a blog with them or something? Um, we're going to do create a promotional video for the art manifestation. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, <sighs> all right. Yeah. So we're back. Yeah. Sorry, man. You're good. Uh, I needed it to be so bad. Um, mm-hmm. So let's talk a little bit about the event mm-hmm. that's coming. Sure. That you're putting together. Yeah. Our manifestation, is yeah, that Yeah, correct, yeah. All right, tell me about it. Or tell us about it. Sure. So <clears throat> the, the talk about ideas, right? There was a time where I was living here on Main Street, and I, there's a – saving ideas for later, right? There's a, that parking lot that's across the street from Valencia that's, like, always empty. In the marketplace? Yeah, yeah, They yeah, close yeah. it, right? They, go, they close the business. Uh, no, 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 not, not that one. There's a literally – just it's a corner it's a parking lot there's just a fence oh, and there's no oh yes yes yeah. yes yes they used to rent car there or yeah, sell yeah. car or something that one right yeah exactly they're selling the space i wanted to buy yeah <laughs> so i would drive by that all the time and i think like oh my god it'd be so cool to like do like a, a food truck festival or just do something there it'd be so cool right and i would think about it all the time nothing ever happened so now we're we're at the mad lab and we wanted to create an event um and, and I feel like now this is that idea coming back and actually happening at the right time. Um, a and pel- peligrier idea? Yeah, exactly. So what we're doing is, um, you know, the across the street from the Mad Lab is a parking lot. And as you know, there's multiple, like, mural boards, and you've painted two there. Um, so I think we have, I think, over, like, 20 pieces of art within the art park that's mm-hmm. permanently there. And we wanted <coughs> to, to, to host an event and to bring our community together. Right. We wanted to do a festival. Um, and for me, it, and this kind of comes back to to also like that that one time where Five Fingers invited us to be at the art festival. And I was like and I thought in my head, like next year, I'm going to come here by myself. Like I'm going to have my own tent and like we're going to take over this festival. Like we're going to be the best thing here. And we actually did that. We, we did come like at that point. We had already had the lab. We came with all the artists. We had our own tent. We had a great time. It was really at the awesome. Sono Festival. Yeah, at the Sono Arts Festival. But then I always had this vision of like, I want to, uh, we want to go beyond that. We want to create our own thing. So this year was the time where we actually were able to do that. So we wanted to do an art festival. We wanted to bring our community together. But beyond that, we wanted to really like brand it and create it and and put like a lot of meaning behind it instead of just like doing an event for the sake of having an event. We wanted to really symbolize something and um, really be important, have something really special about it. So we decided to uh, talking about like manifesting our dreams and turning Norwalk into the art capital of the world. Right. That's like the big vision. Then we thought, well, the first step maybe is let's let's do a festival where we bring all of where we focus on connecting all of the creatives in Connecticut. Right, because like, I think that if we want to turn this city into the art capital of the world, we need to be build a foundation for what does that even mean? What does that represent? Right? How can we actually put meaning behind that? So for us, in, in pursuing this dream of becoming an artist, it's there's something that I've heard so many times is that like if you want to be successful, you have to go to New York City, go to Brooklyn, mm-hmm. because there you have all the resources to be successful. Right. But I didn't want to do that. Like, that's that's what you're supposed to do. Right. I never want to do what I'm supposed to do. I kind of want to do my own thing. Like, I feel that if if instead of competing with everybody else, I can create my own competition and be the top gun in that competition. So that's what we wanted to do. Right. We wanted to bring to create a place that could be a tradition, create an event that could be a tradition for Connecticut creatives to always come and amplify our voice like we want to. To ha- we want to have a festival that is going to showcase the best that Connecticut has to offer, right? So to actually stand out as the art capital of the world so that we can slowly grow it and build a tradition that, like, you know, like, imagine, like, five, ten years from now, like, everyone, like, from all over the world will come to this one festival to create to create art and manifest their dreams. Because th- th- that there's two points of the festival. One is to connect all of Connecticut's creatives. That's how we want to start. Right. Because Connecticut has so much creativity, has so many talented artists. But because we're so far away and secluded, it's it's hard to collaborate. It's hard to 
you know there's so many things going on even within norwalk there's so many artist collaboratives but we're kind of like we don't work together right mm-hmm. so we want to actually like change the narrative to make it easy for us to actually like come together and do great things together same thing like the power ranger model right like mm-hmm. connecticut has so many different artists like the art manifestation is the biggest robot we're going to morph into and in addition to that right going back to like creating the correct the right environment for people to be successful we want this festival to be a place where artists feel inspired to manifest their dreams right so that's why it's called the art manifestation we want people to to come there and see other artists manifesting their dreams and be inspired by all the cool things that are happening that they feel empowered to take on anything that they want in their lives and not only that that they have the support and the people around them that are going to cheer them on right mm-hmm. so so that's what the festival is about so oh, man. yeah super cool idea yeah if if you have to describe it for artists right mm-hmm. what would be the difference of them coming to this show and participating in this show uh, versus Son Noir Festival, for example. You guys doing it for how? Three days? A weekend too? Is no, it's just, it's going to be one, one day. day. It's going to be August 28th from 12 to 6 p.m. And and if I had to differentiate it, I think the best way to differentiate it is the human experience. The mm-hmm. human experience and the intention behind it. Um, I mean, I've been to the Son Noir Arts Festival. It, it's great. You know, it's a, it's a nice festival um and not like it's i don't see it as a competition or anything like no. that i think for us is like you know i just trying i just I, I don't i don't mean in that way because it's important for me that mm-hmm. it's understand it that uh, um that i don't mean in that w- understand it understood understood in that way that it's not like what you better than them or, mm-hmm. or i think they're better than you it's not about that because i wish it was our festival every weekend or the mm-hmm. full year yeah you know what i mean and uh-huh. people were super exposed to yeah. art all the time because it's kind of mm-hmm. less and less every day you know but what i'm trying to say is more to try to explain people that already sure. know that show well i think I th- or, again or so that I concept because for the people that don't know that sono art festival is one of those uh our and craft festivals that they do all around the state and i'm mm-hmm. sure other states probably have them too where for a weekend two or three days they block a few streets they mm-hmm. close it sometimes they're doing parks in other cities yeah <coughs> uh, and they block a couple of streets put a couple of stage with live music or performance during mm-hmm. the day and a bunch of uh kind of tents mm-hmm. uh, booth tents yeah. and people showcase their own work so people from all around the mm-hmm. country rent those spaces and they they are pretty much travel artists so they yeah. go from one city to the other one showcasing their work mm-hmm. and trying to sell and make some profits and it spread their their, 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 their job their yeah. work trying to showcase their work mm-hmm. you know, to the world that's the sonar festival for yeah. the people that don't know about it so so yes it's it's the same in that aspect of the way that the physical form of it mm-hmm. i think the difference behind it is like our intention with the festival right mm-hmm. it's it's not just a festival to bring people to, to to sell the work our intention with creating this is not this one day is like the year long work of connecting our community and really creating a megaphone to amplify our voice here right and also empowering people to manifest their dreams right so um and in addition to that like the way that we're like marketing ourselves, the way that we're are creating platforms to actually empower each individual, like beyond the festival, you know, like we're we're marketing every single person who has gotten a booth within our festival. We're marketing them individually on social media, right? Same thing with our sponsors. Um, we're also working with like up and coming artists within the community that are doing the performances, right? Like Similar Kind, which is a super awesome band that's up and coming here in Norwalk they're going to be our headliners. Um, and then in addition to that too, we're also having like a mural competition where we've put a call for artists for the past like two months mm-hmm. um, for any artists that want to participate in the festival uh, within the mural competition to apply. And we've already ch- chosen all the artists. So those artists will f- compete at the festival. They're getting paid to be at the festival and compete. But um at the festival, they're going to create live pieces of artwork. So they're each going to create a, a mural, just like the ones that we have there now. Um, and our judges are going to choose the, the, 
you know the the winning artist and that artist is gonna win a cash prize um so cool man so they're gonna be painting in, in similar size like the one that i did yeah well the, the one thing, that like, you did was there were doubles so i, I did one double in one single oh yeah you did yeah the one you did of your son was a single one right uh, my son is single yeah. well, well, i forgot the size like four by six feet yeah it's, or something. It, yeah it's four by six four by seven something like that something like that yeah. and that one that is double is two of those pieces so it will be eight by six or something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah right? exactly so so each artist is going to be painting a, a, a four by six mural a single one oh yeah cool, a single man. one so Super there'll be cool. like one artist on either side and then on the other side of the parking lot there were one one artist on either side of the mural so and I think that, that that's kind of what differentiates us, right? Like out, outside of the actual physical form of the festival, which can be seen as similar to other ones, we're really looking f for ways to like showcase Connecticut specifically, at least for this one. Like, I mean, like, you know, again, like this all goes back to like the big moon vision of turning Norwalk into the art capital of the world, mm -hmm. right? And like one of the first steps for that is to really like unify our community like you know it's not just a festival to bring people and sell work our goal like the what the measure of success for this event is did we do a good job at promoting our creatives and and creating a feeling of unity mm -hmm. that can so like, that can sustain right? us until next year to build that camaraderie right so like again like today and and I feel like I say this humbly in the sense of like you know, I'm not a know-it-all and I haven't been doing this forever, right? Like, especially in Connecticut. Like, I'm as young as, as, as new as I can be to the scene. Um, and there has, and I've recognized that there's been so many other artists before us that have been striving to connect Connecticut, to connect, you know, our community, right? Like, mm -hmm. we're not, this isn't different. This is just our way of doing it. And I think that in addition to that, our demographic and the people that, like, are kind of uh kind of really excited about what we're doing are artists that typically haven't had too many opportunities mm -hmm. so we're really creating and a lot of young people too. a lot of a lot of young people right so I, th I i think what i'm recognizing now is that we're creating a completely new avenue for other artists that haven't had the most opportunities right like mm -hmm. there's we're there's there's you know like veteran artists that have been doing this for a long time but then there's also some artists who have like who have never had the courage and now they're they're taking the step and they're doing this mm -hmm. right and that goes back to to the feeling and to the intention behind the festival which is it to inspire inspire those individuals who didn't see it in themselves to have the courage to do it and in addition to empower the ones that have been doing it for a long time to do it better and to elevate those who are just starting. Right. So for us, that's why I say human connection, like with the mad lab, everything that we've done has been about the experience within that environment. Like, like it all started with emotion explosion, right? This mm -hmm. is just an extension of that emotion explosion was about bringing people together and being contained in a space and being inspired by what what we were doing together. If I was there by myself, it would have been different. And if I have all these people there working under one mission, right, with a positive attitude towards something that like helps empower everybody, then that's magical. Even right? even if you have the same group of people or the same amount of people, not the same group of people, but the same amount of people but everybody was working very independent of each other, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been the same. Exactly. As it was being a unit, yeah. like a one mm -hmm. communal team, yeah. like a group of people working toward that goal of yeah. let's destroy those kind of fears that sometimes we have. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. yeah. It's just collective elevation. Like mm -hmm. we all we all want to like build a platform and help each other. Like we're not trying to stand on top of each other. Mm -hmm. We're trying to like create a platform that we can all stand on. Yeah. Right. And then create important. another platform that we can all stand on and slowly go, go up together. Right. Cause like th there's a saying that says alone, you go fast together. You go far, farther. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal. Like, you know, we want to like to work together to, to create something great. Right. And it's been, it's been really inspiring because the way we put the festival together was, um, first we held, a, we did a, a fundraiser. We collaborated with, um, uh, CT Murals, which is an organization out of Hartford, um, 
run by Matt Conway, and he he basically helps create giant murals all around Connecticut, right? I don't know if you've heard about the MLK corridor, all the murals that are going to happen here on MLK Boulevard. They're, you know, Norwalk is creating, like, this this big project where they're going to, like, create all of these, like, MLK-related murals all along MLK Boulevard, right, with with this idea of, like, revitalizing the city and, and, and really help kind of elevate that community. Um, so Matt has been involved in that project, but he's also been, like, he's worked with, like, multiple artists raising I haven't f- heard about it oh really I don't think so yeah, yeah. I don't remember I mean it's no. definitely you know like the arts commission has been really pushing it there's I mean it's already like pretty far into development they've already kind of selected all the artists and like they're gonna start kind of implementing some of the artwork now but um but what I was trying to say is that so Matt he essentially like works with artists and small organizations he raised money from private organizations to create murals in the cities, right? So a lot of the times it'll be like a mural that's like empowering with a positive message. Other times it'll be a mural where like the artist will work with like a school or kids to create mm-hmm. something awesome. So he's out there like putting all this good energy and art into the world. And we connected like he through the art park and through what we were doing, like we just kind of connected on social media. And and for us it was so empowering because like now here's we, we want to connect Connecticut, right? And we're we're here on the south south of Connecticut, and he's in Hartford. Now we kind of like create this bridge between these two, right? Mm-hmm. So um, uh, again, connecting the community. So we imp- we partner with him because his company is a, a nonprofit, and we partnered also with Sustainable CT, which is a private organization that helps fund public art projects. So anything that we raised for this art manifestation they would double up to $7,500. So with with that alone, we were able to raise Mm $15,000 for this project. And that goes towards the art manifestation and the mural competition. And all we have to do is create public artwork that's for everyone to enjoy. And hence, that's the main focus is the mural competition. Mm -hmm. Because now we can actually pay artists, right, that can, um, (coughs) that can, uh, represent our state and our ability to be creative um and we can pay them to do awesome work and then also promote them and have them like live on forever in this art park right and 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 ideally we can continue this on and on and you know imagine what we can do in 10 years of with with this mission right so for us that's 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 the differentiator is like our motive and in uh and our intention behind it right because You know, like I see that in, if, if we can be successful with this event, right, imagine the sponsorship that we can get next year. Imagine the support that we can get from the city and we can get from the state. Imagine having the state fully invested in this project. Mm-hmm. Like imagine if that state, our governor was like, we want to turn Connecticut, Connecticut. into our capital of the world. Like imagine the power behind that. No, definitely. Right? I really hope they start thinking in that way because you know politicians a lot of the time they get distracted by (laughs) whatever give them votes and sometimes art is not the main thing even though some of them Mm -hmm. realize and understand how important art is for for the world and for Mm -hmm. the communities hopefully hopefully I hope so, man. Mm-hmm. I hope it, it keeps growing from there. Mm-hmm. Because again, we go back to circle to everything that we've been talking so far. Mm-hmm. You are starting something very, something that can be very huge mm-hmm. from a modest mm-hmm. starting point. That is not that modest because it's still big mm-hmm. enough, but you're trying to concentrate in Connecticut, artists from Connecticut, an association from Connecticut. But again, if your goal keeps growing and goes to what it, if you, if this project keeps growing, go to where your goal is planned to be. Mm-hmm. In some point, gonna be artists from all the world showcasing exactly, yeah. and doing projects here in Norwalk or in Connecticut yeah. somewhere that we find the big space yeah. to congregate everybody. Yeah. And it's, it's it's very clear for me the difference between the Sonar Festival and all those festival and your festival, mm-hmm. the one that you guys are putting together. Um, I feel somehow it's a lot more artistic mm-hmm. 
from the point of view that it's kind of made by artists mm -hmm. for artists mm -hmm. and for the community to see how the art work works mm -hmm. let's say seeing people doing art live and seeing young art artists and people like you guys putting together this kind of show for the community and showcasing other artists as you said never been showcased before they just knew they just young or, or, mm -hmm. or whatever is that reason <clears throat> But giving this platform to everybody to see, you know, the artist to showcase mm -hmm. and also to see whatever is happening in the community. I don't know. I don't know many painters in, in Connecticut, for example, mm -hmm. not even in Norwalk, mm -hmm. less yet in the whole state. And and something that is super cool about, for example, tattoo conventions, right, mm -hmm. is that you go to a place to tattoo with a bunch of different artists in the same, under the same roof. But many different styles many different tools many different uh cultural way to approach the art mm -hmm. so this is art those are artists that come from all around the world in some mm -hmm. of the conventions some conventions are smaller but let's say one of those big conventions is the two artists that come from all around the world and you just having to work in front of these people in the back of your head already is like i have to do good you know what yeah. i mean and then you go and see what they're doing, then come and see what you're doing. Then you talk to people and meet people and break all those barriers yeah. of, of distance and, and all of that. It's so important for the yeah, for the industry itself. For the I feel like it's like industry. fire for like collaboration. It's yes. like you just like, you know, like, because I think that like one of the hardest part about being an artist is like, is just being an artist, is being creative and like putting yourself in that situation and like feeling like you can do it, right? So I think when you put a bunch of people together and you say like let's do it together, it just it just makes it so much better. And like you kind of feel like you feel like a superhero because like you got yeah. all of these people doing it with. So you. it's that twenty eighth of August, right? August twenty eighth. So yeah, we're like two like, weeks from now, kind of. What is it? It's we're, a Saturday, right? We're twenty. Wow, we're twenty days away. Yeah, don't get scared. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to do. Yeah. Yes. So. Do you guys have plan like a backup day for rain or weather as yeah. people do? So the it's August twenty eighth, which is a Saturday, mm -hmm. and the rain day is August 29th. That's Sunday. Yeah. Why you didn't do on Sunday rather than Saturday? Uh, we just felt like Saturday would would like be a better day. Plus, it would also allow us to have Sunday as a rain day, mm -hmm. as opposed to like let's do it the next week. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it's always I think the scariest part is like thinking, do you have to move it? You know, God willing. It'll happen on the twenty eighth. Yes. Um. But I mean, Saturday just felt like the better day, you know. Okay. That that way we can also kind of like stay a little bit later. People don't feel compelled to like leave early because mm -hmm. tomorrow is Monday and all that other stuff. Yes. Yes. Definitely. If you have to do only one day, something that is that long as a you know a festival with several several attractions going mm -hmm. on at the same time, like painting murals, showcasing probably live bands playing. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's always good when you don't have that kind of. By 6 p.m., you have to be gone because next yeah. day is working day. Yeah. You know? And then the, the good thing Some is people have to travel back yeah. to, the, to their home, so it's harder when it's... Yeah. And then, and then the good thing for us, too, is that, like, you know, we're really trying to focus, um, you know, like, something that I've learned, too, is that, like, when you're trying to kind of go big and do a lot, is to not get overwhelmed by trying to do a lot and go big right away. Is to just simply focus on, like, literally, like at arm's reach what's around you and mm -hmm. who's already part of your network right just doing really <coughs> well by them because in essence <clears throat> if you do really well by the people who are already in support of you they'll tell other people and it'll grow yes. right so again for us that's why we're focusing on connecticut that's why we're focusing on our backyard we're focusing on wall street and we're focusing on the isaac square because those are the people who really know us and who are already supporting us so we felt like doing it on, on the Saturday, you know, also gives them time to like go out onto Wall Street and like go to the restaurants. You know, maybe there's something going on at the Wall Street Theater afterwards and then they can kind of go to a show or like just really kind of allow them to like explore our area. And, and there's so many murals already around the area that mm -hmm. kind of gives them more kind of time to like enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. man. I like it. Yeah. And why just one day? <laughs> This is funny. When we when we first thought of the festival, we were like, all right, we're going to do this festival. It's going to be great. We're going to do it for three months, and we're going to do it every weekend for three months, and this, this, and that. And wait, 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 wait. Say it again? Every like, three months? No, no. When we first thought of this, uh -huh. we were like, let's do it all summer, and we'll do it every weekend or every other weekend for the entire summer. Oh, oh, sure. And, the, and then 
it's lo- like, you know, <laughs> we talk about like having crazy ideas, right? And then we kind of took a step back and we said, look, you know, for us, it's going to be crazy for us to be successful and be able to pull this off like to that level if we do it every single day. Plus, like we're not going to have money to do that, right? We mm-hmm. have to raise the money. So we felt that we could be mo- more successful if we just focus on just getting it off the ground. Let's just put a stake on the ground that this is happening from now on. And that like if if we focus on doing just one really, 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 really good festival and we create an amazing experience that people that are that's unforgettable, then next year we can do two days. Or next year we can do it every other you know? Mm-hmm. So for us it was, you know, we had ambitions to go like much bigger and to do it more frequently, but we felt that like um in order for us to be successful and to do a really good job and to do right by our mission, um, we could start a little smaller Mm -hmm. and then slowly grow. I mean, like the, the real vision is to like essentially make it grow it onto wall street. Right. Like it can be actually the festival can be like on wall street and then on river street, like right where your mural is. Um, and then it can like spill back onto Isaac. Like imagine the entire neighborhood, Mm -hmm. like super activated. Like imagine like thousands of people just pouring into wall street from like, all over the country, all over the world. Like, you know, like I want this to be like Art Basel. Like, yes. you know, I mean, that, that's crazy to say, like, who am I to say that? But that, like, no, no, that's I, the I, vision. That's the dream. I, I'm, I'm, I'm there with you, man. Yeah. When you, when you mention big teams, yeah. I freak out a little bit, but it's I, exciting, I, but right? I get excited right yeah, away. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Definitely. My, my thought is like, fuck, I gotta be hot. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Let's do it. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's like, that, like, uh, that's too crazy. All right, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's yeah. see what we can do. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it's so fucking crazy. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Definitely. Every time you mention something big, it mm-hmm. pff, right away is like. It's uh, exciting. It's exhilarating. Yes. It should be. Yeah. A lot of people are going to be like, fuck you crazy. Don't yeah. do that. What people. No. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. You know, mm-hmm. let's do it, man. Um, mm-hmm. for, from outside, I, w- I feel like one day is too little. Mm-hmm. Wait, hold on. I know. I know. Mm-hmm. Arguing with you. I don't. I'm no, going to no. let you know my process of sure. thinking, right? Uh, I feel it's too little because again, installing tents, uh, booth, and people have to travel with their project. They have to pick it up, put in boxes, come here, unpackage, set mm-hmm. it up, and all of that. Some people have to invest money in mm-hmm. coming here. So one day to recover the inbe- investment and and to give enough time for people to come and enough people to see it mm-hmm. and all of that is sounds tough, you know. But I hundred percent agree. It's good to start with a solid project. One day is better to do, like, rather than trying, like, yeah, I gotta do three days. I don't have, I have zero experience and zero dollars to do it, but I gotta do it. Mm-hmm. That probably could be a bad idea. It's better to do one solid good day that people is excited. Public next year wanna come. Mm-hmm. People gonna talk and gonna be like, you miss it. People gonna be next year, I wanna see it too. Yeah. And artists gonna be like, oh, everything was on point. Always little yeah, shit yeah. happen, whatever, you know, but everything was on point. I'm glad I did it with you guys. I want to come back next year, call me in. Mm-hmm. So next year, you know, already you have these people. So, yes, it, it was, it's, it's smart. It's smart. Yeah. It's smart to try to do, a start like, with like, a point that you can control the most possible. Yeah. It's like, it's like a calculated risk, right? Because, I mean, exactly. this, there's, there's also a risk to this because, like, you know, I mean, we're very, uh, we're very confident in what we're doing, but who knows what's going to happen, right? Like, yes. you know, like if, if it rains it kind of sucks like you know rain can can kind of make or break these types of things so um uh I, th- I think for us it was really about you know focusing on just the idea and just like the execution of like what what can we do and i, I mean and also like you know uh honestly like everything that we're doing for the most part you know like 80 percent of everything is just wilson jessica and myself so it's just the three of us, you know, working full time jobs mm-hmm. and then doing this on the side. So, you know, it and, and, and not just this because you guys keep having events in your, in the mad labs. Like yeah. last Friday was one of them in the night mm-hmm. uh, for everybody that's listening. And it's local, even local. I mean, in the three estates or whatever. Mm-hmm. Check the mad 
Mad we are Mad underscore we no are. Mad underscore we underscore are oh, yeah. right. If you just type in Mad we are on a search it shows, bar, it, sh- it shows up. It's yeah. your show, right? Yeah. That that's on Instagram. Yeah, we're so cool like that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys always post what you're doing, and yeah. you guys have always uh, mm-hmm. events yeah. where like drawing from life or mm-hmm. show art shows or yeah. people come and sell crafts i seen like mm-hmm. jewelry and stuff like that that they yeah. do you have music you have drinks sometimes or, yeah. or food so you guys always doing events yeah over the fact that you're full-time working and full-time trying to create art too for mm-hmm. those events and now putting and together now the, the, festival, the manifest yeah, yeah it's art. it's been it's been a lot of work i'm and and we've you've had help um you know i think that that's something that we've been grateful for is that like outside of the three of us trying to kind of like run the ship um as the years have gone by and as this this project specifically has grown we've had a lot of people reach out to want to help um you know and we've had individuals that have like actually take on a lot of responsibility within the event to kind of make it possible so Mm -hmm. you know shout out to, to everybody um you know so but going back to like visualizing the the whole thing it was you know it was uh it was, you know, a calculated risk of, you know, how much can we focus, you know, because that's something that I've learned in my design experience is that when I'm designing a house and a client, you know, like, let's say like you have your studio, your basement, right? You're like, all right, I want this studio to be a podcast studio. I want it to be a living room and I want it to be a painting studio and I want to be this, this and that. Like, sure, you you can do that, but like, it's not going to be the best podcast studio and it's not going to be the best living room and it's not going to be the best painting studio right Mm -hmm. but now if you say i want to turn this space into the ultimate podcasting studio then it can actually be the best podcasting studio Mm -hmm. right because you're focusing all of your energy to achieve one thing like you're not kind of like splitting everything and and that's what kind of was for us it was like there's so many goals there's so many things that need to happen right and and we don't just you know uh, outside of just bringing people and setting up tents right we're we're really trying to bring this into the digital area right like we want this to be promoted on social media very different than anything else has been before right mm-hmm. we really want to focus on like supporting artists and promoting the artists you know i'm grateful to be on a podcast talking about it like we really want to do a lot of that um we really want to have like an ability to tap into the local businesses and help promote them as well so we can tap into the neighborhood and bring value to that mm-hmm. you know like literally we want to transform wall street with this event um we want to have like you know n- right now not an app but we really want to have like a, a phone experience where like you can go and you can scan a qr code and learn about every single artist you can know you can see the timeline of all the performers you can see all the sponsors so you know it was like it was you know let's pack in as much as we can into one day to like really like blow it out of the water right Mm -hmm. so um so yeah that was that was the whole yeah it's cool man i'm excited yeah i'm gonna be there man for sure yeah showing some support (laughs) yeah yeah. and Um, i mean technically you're gonna be showing because you have two murals on the (laughs) art park yeah (laughs) Uh, let me let me ask you this: um, How is being the receptivity by the people, by the community, the artist community? Mm-hmm. Let's say how is being that you you guys. So, okay, let's see. Are you guys planning to set booths or tables or people gonna come and show, try to sell their work? Sure. So, um, for any of those who are listening, right, and if if you are, if you're not familiar with <clears throat> Norwalk, if you just type in Isaac Square. Or you type in the Mad Lab onto Google, you'll see that there's like a big parking lot. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna set up a series of booths. So, um, and I'll speak to you directly because you know what the space looks like. But in the main part of the parking lot, we're gonna have two tents right where like the the flow of traffic is. Mm-hmm. And then so that what's gonna happen is that like you're gonna create these two paths where someone will be able to walk where like usually the cars are parked, and they'll be able to see the art on one side and they'll see the booths on the other side. So a really cool experience of like walking around this space and then we're also going to have multiple food trucks we're going to have the blind rhino there um you know supplying drinks we're going to have a main stage where uh you know we're going to have 10 different artists performing we're going to have similar kind is going to be headlining um bk who's a rapper and an artist out of uh here in norwalk is also going to be performing ricky stevens we're going to have um uh dance performances as well 
Um, and then, you know, and then we'll also have multiple art installations. One is a digital, uh, is a retrofitted school bus that was retrofitted into a digital art studio. Oh, wow. So, you know, this, this bus has multiple chairs and you lean back in the chair and like a screen comes down and you can like create digital art. Right. And then another school bus, um, car, uh, it's called Cardi CT. They retrofitted a school bus to be a museum on wheels so that they can take artwork to different schools right so instead of a school going to a museum the museum travels to the school mm -hmm. right and we have different artists who are creating different art installations for you to actually come and like be immersed in art right so almost like a sculpture garden um so so that's kind of the vibe that we're going for right and then there's also going to be the mural competition mm -hmm. and then at the Mad Lab, we're going to be showcasing our own artists. So the Mad Lab is going to be kind of like our own booth, our own tent, mm -hmm. you know, um, where we're going to be selling our merch and we're going to be, you know, selling our own artwork. We're coming out with a, we designed a, a very special shirt, um, a manifesting shirt that we, we designed to actually like, the whole point of the shirt is to like empower artists and to kind of like be a token that like we all show like, uh support towards like th this manifesting like the the connecticut art community um and then we'll also have like uh art comp uh an um uh a workshop area where like kids can actually come and do art oh cool. right mm -hmm. and there's also going to be like a big like um paint by number mural that we're going to do so there's gonna be a community project where like you guys have been doing those here. right yeah lately I, I think i saw yeah the sono collection so uh sono the Sono Collection hired us to, they've been doing like a music sort of festival at their rooftop and they reached out to us and they said, hey, like we really want, I mean, because th the mall is super cool. They, they're super into arts. They're super into uh, empowering the local art community. They have like murals everywhere. So they reached out to us and said, hey, we, we want to have an art component to this thing that we're doing. And they basically just like left it up to us to kind of come up with whatever we wanted. And so we designed this, uh, community art experience where you if if you're at the at the mall and you're there for the, f the show and everything else you come and like we have this paint by mural by paint number. by number mural right and it's kind of cool because it's also like a puzzle piece it when you sh first show up it's in four different pieces and you can go and you're just like painting the page right so anyone like we've had kids we had like like and uh, there's an old guy that came. He was like 106 years old or something crazy oh, like wow. that. He was just like looking at it. I was like, do you want to paint? And he's like, I'm 106 years old. I was like, okay. <laughs> um, so, you know, kids and adults and everyone kind of just comes and has fun. And then we like put it together and then you get to see a message and it says a message on it. Mm -hmm. And then like we finished the mural. So we've been doing that there and we're going to bring that to, to, to our festival to as well. Time to allow you know like again like you know it's all about the community like we really focus on the human experience right especially like right now when we're in this really weird limbo mode with covid right we're like it's scary to be around people right it's mm -hmm. scary to come together and i feel like we've been stripped of, of all human experience right like you go to the grocery store there's barriers between you and another human right and it's just like it's it's scary to hug loved ones and all that other stuff and and I think we've all been deprived of of being together, right? So we really want <clears throat> to create this experience when when you are together, it feels so good and so amazing that like it, it like it holds you over, right? Like it's like well, sure we can go through quarantine again, but like man, the emotion that like uh, the art manifestation was so good. I can't wait to do that <clears throat> again. I can't wait to be together with other people again. Yes, yeah, definitely. We're very complicated times, man, yeah. and and right now it feels a little more normal mm -hmm. at, at least around us yeah. i don't know other countries are more complicated definitely um but <clears throat> but it feels much better right now right yeah. when you can again shake hands people say don't do it i still do it yeah uh, i got vaccinated i don't know mm -hmm. you but i got vaccinated and i keep listening people saying like things gonna get back again mm -hmm. bad again and and i don't want to even hear it yeah. <laughs> something that i did intentionally did for myself and i encourage people to do is to stop listening to news mm -hmm. man the world is such a beautiful place when you're not listening to news um and i i, I guess 
probably the worst news that you have to get to know. People gotta tell you any way around, you know, like oh tomorrow gotta snow, you know, yeah. things like that. You if you have to prepare yourself or whatever. Yeah. But other than that, man, it's so good to be away from the news yeah. because news get you depressed all the time, yeah. keep you scared, keep you in. in oh my god, it's so yeah. annoying. <clears throat> but but yeah, man. <clears throat> I'm sorry. But yeah, that the human touch, man, talking to your friend, visiting friends, mm -hmm. you know, sitting like that with somebody, yeah. you, everything was ripped away from you mm -hmm. by this crazy disease and, and part for the disease and big part for what people or media say about mm -hmm. it, that we never got to know exactly what, what was or not. Yeah. But but having, having those events mm -hmm. right now, is, it's a good way to try to reconnect, right? Yeah. And, and enjoy again community 100%, and people yeah. and stuff. So, I'm excited for that project, man. Yeah, I, man. I, I've, been, I've been trying to keep an eye in your social media. And now and then I share whatever I can mm -hmm. just to help you, you know, as as much as I could of course, with my yeah. social media. Tell me a little bit about that. Man, you're making f very cool and fun videos. Mm -hmm. Kind of a vlog you have. Yeah. You have it on YouTube or you have a private vlog in, in somewhere else? Or? No. So, I, yeah, I started... Uh, what was it it was 20 it was 2020 i think i started yeah 2020 was when i started my youtube vlog i've always been inspired by you know youtubers and i've always wanted to like tell my story um and it's also for me just another way of creating so if you just type in my name on youtube it's weverson ponty you'll you'll kind of come how across you spell it. the ponty uh it's p-o-n-t-e ponte oh ponte yeah it means bridge in portuguese Oh yeah, yeah. Like puente in Spanish. Puente. puente. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So and and what I do <clears throat> in the vlog is basically just tell my own story. And again, it goes back to do you boo boo, right? For me, it's a way of cataloging my life. It's a way of trying to tell the story of me and my friends building the Mad Lab. It's a way of you know documenting my artwork and my creative process. Um, and it's a way that like, I hope to inspire other people to follow their dreams, just the way that I was inspired by other YouTubers that do things completely different. You know, like some, of, some of my YouTubers are, are car builders, right? Like they build mm -hmm. cars and that kind of goes back to my little kid self and be inspired by that. And, and now I'm just, I, I'm trying to do what they do in my own way, right? Like I'm not building cars, but I'm, I'm building my creative dream. Mm -hmm. and uh so that's what i do so you know every week i upload a video um you know so i've uploaded videos about uh what we're doing at the sono collection the process of us designing and building this these murals and then showing us actually doing it um there's you know there's some vlogs about you know me kind of having conversations like this with the camera about just like i call them confessionals or i'm just like talking about like my own troubles because i think that with social media, it's so easy to just show, show the good stuff. And I've had people who, like, reach out to me and say, hey, like, I love what you're doing. Like, you, you, you're you very inspiring. Like, you know, I, I, I hope to one day be able to do something like this for myself. And I, I want to show the other side as well that, like, it's not always easy. I don't want people to think that, like, you know, I have everything, that I've achieved all of my dreams, mm -hmm. and that, like, my life is dandy and it's perfect all the time, right? So it's just it's just a it's it's a vlog of just kind of showing people trying to be vulnerable and showing people you know uh, s something personal to me like hey this is why I'm at this is why I am this is what I'm doing. Cool man, yeah. that's that's very important, very yeah. important because you're right. Now we got so accustomed to the idea that when we see a photo on Instagram of somebody, we assume oh they got the perfect life and my life sucks, right? Yeah. Of course, I'm kind of a little safe of that, a little, just because I grew up outside of that world, mm -hmm. you know, I'm much older. For a lot of young kids, they see that world, and they see the world that is being portrayed by the people they follow, you know, mm -hmm. the role models or whatever, the people that inspire them or they love or whatever. And they feel like, oh, my life sucks because my skin doesn't look that smooth or... I don't know, I don't have that car or mm -hmm. I don't know all these people that they're hanging out with and, and you know, and all of that. And it's most of the time, it's just a fantasy, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a fantasy world created by that one moment, that, that one picture of the food, it was actually 20 photos. Yeah. That selfie that looks so beautiful, it's actually 45 photos. It's mm -hmm. not one photo that yeah. accidentally she took of herself or he took of himself mm -hmm. or they or whatever it is. 
to God and stuff is actually a bunch of photos with different tries, different angles, mm -hmm. different poses until you finally got that one that you yeah. like and then you retouch it and then you clean it and then mm -hmm. you put a filter and then you put it on social media. Yeah. And the, you you kind of put a title there or, or mm -hmm. whatever, a description as a, yes, here, you know, mm -hmm. killing it as always. And yeah. reality, all of that is so fake, but yeah. it's being sell every day so much to mm -hmm. other to people to watchers that make us believe that's true that moment that instant it was true a special moment when in reality is just yeah a very filtered right, mm -hmm. right, moment so it's good to see the other side also because again circle back to what we were been talking many people have dreams or have goals or have this um uh, this life they want to pursue, mm -hmm. but they look everybody posting, feeling like it's so easy for them and so hard for me. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's easy. It's just that you just seeing that instant again. Yeah. But when you have the opportunity to present to the people the struggle and people can see it or listen to like, it wasn't easy to, to do this. It, it was a lot of work to get to this point, right? Mm -hmm. So when people see it, it's like, oh, okay, so it means I have to put the work. Yeah. Oh, it means that I might fail, but it doesn't yeah. mean I'm a failure. It's just part of a process mm -hmm. and I just have to learn and keep moving forward and I have to have dreams and goals and pers like once people see that all the part of the world, it might be more encouraged to try to do that own, yeah. right? And I mean, I, and that's happened with me. Like, you know, there's some, some YouTubers that I follow and then like, you know, because like I almost use them like, and, and this is like a slippery slope, right? Because you don't want you to, like, you don't want to compare yourself too much. What I learned is that like, you want to be inspired, but you don't want to imitate. Mm -hmm. Right. So, cause like it, it's hard cause it's kind of new, but like, if you think about it in the aspect of like sports, right. Sports is like old, like people, this has been around for a long time. So like you have a little kid who will like be inspired by like, you know, Michael Jordan. Oh my mm -hmm. God, I'll watch everything. I want to be just like Michael Jordan. Right. Um, so it's okay, but you also have to recognize like, wow, Michael Jordan works so hard. I don't know if you've seen like the documentary, yeah. right? Like yeah. seeing that to me is so inspiring because it's like, that's what it takes, man. Like it takes like sacrificing. It takes dedication. It takes like, you know, like being alone in a hotel room for days on end, you know, like, and, and, and I think that like that needs to be portrayed just as much because like, you know, it's not just like, it, just like when you start a painting, it's not just thinking of what the painting is going to look like at the end. You have to go through the ups and downs to get to the end of the painting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's been <clears throat> YouTubers that I'm inspired by and I'll see everything. They got like millions of followers and I'll see how awesome their videos are. And then I'm like, wow, like how come my videos are not like that? Right. And now I've started to see some of the things that they shared and it's like, wow, like to create this one video, like this is what I did. And I, it, ma it makes me feel a little bit better because I'm like, oh, OK, like that's a lot of fucking work. Like that's a lot of work. Like I don't know if, yeah. like, if I can do all that work, but it's like, but if I choose to, maybe I can I can see that as well. Right. If I decide to like it's almost like peeling back the book and seeing like this is how I did it. You know, it was a, it was a lot of hard work, but but if you want to put in just as much work, like you will find your own version of success. It's not just like, oh, because you kind of did it and it, you know, like I used to think that like, yeah. you know, like if I did something and it wasn't great, that means I wasn't good enough. Like mm -hmm. that's been something in my life where I felt like, you know, like playing soccer, right? Like, oh, I played soccer for a little bit and I wasn't great. That means I'm not, I shouldn't play soccer because I'm not good. Or when I used to skateboard, and, you know, I wanted to be a professional skateboarder and like I just kind of skateboarded and I was like, man, I'm not good enough. Like I'll never I'll never be great. Like I'm not supposed to do this. Right. I'm fortunate that I've gone through all that stuff and I recognize that like, oh, it's not because like you're just supposed to be born great and that allows you to do it. It's that like you can have a passion and that's the entry. That's the key. Mm -hmm. But then you have to work really you hard to put the work. and put the work in and like it has to suck. It also has to suck. Like. There's a book that I that I listen to. Uh, I think it's like the art of not giving a fuck. Oh, I, right? I know that book. I it, I think it was that book, and in that book he talks about this idea of like eating a shit sandwich. So no matter what you do in life, you're always gonna have to eat a sit sandwich, eat a shit sandwich, right? Like if you want to be a a successful musician, 
right? It's not just showing up and playing a concert to millions of people. It is going to a bar like at one o'clock in the morning and playing to nobody, mm-hmm. right? It's getting out of your job and then like filling your van with all your equipment in the middle of the rain and then unloading the van and then doing this and doing that. And if you don't, and that's the shit sandwich, right? That's mm-hmm. the part that sucks. If you're not willing to do that, to play to millions of people, then maybe you're not willing to do it at all, right? So it's yeah. like, in my case, you know, like I wasn't, I didn't know I had to eat a shit sandwich to do all those things, right? And now today I recognize that, you know, like if I want to turn Norwalk into the art capital of the world, if I want to be a successful artist, well, then I have to work my job, I have to save some money, and then I have to show up at the lab, meet with everybody, and put in the work, right? I have to like work on my YouTube channel, like every day I have to record it. I have to edit it when like all my friends are out having fun. I have to be at home. I have to, you know, Mm -hmm. and like those days are the hard days. It's like, it sucks. Like, you know, like I wish I was kind of like out partying, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what? It's okay. Because what I want more is to have somebody reach out to me and say, dude, I love your work. I'm super inspired. I want to do like, you know, like you inspired me to go like that's what i want selfishly for me mm-hmm. right so yeah yeah man it's it's like there might be chest sandwiches or sandwiches of chet or whatever mm-hmm. but when you look back they taste good man yeah <laughs> you know what i mean uh-huh. it's one of those yeah they, they tasted miserable they were <laughs> horrible moments but so worth it when you yeah. when you're now here and looking back and seeing mm-hmm. all that you went through i feel like I wish hmm, we, we probably could start that more. I don't know if it's happening. I don't know what to say. Like, mm-hmm. I created it. It's just part of this conversation coming out of my mind. But I feel like at this point, man, celebrities should feel the necessity to showcase more the real world yeah. to their fans. Like, su- suicide, right? Committing mm-hmm. suicide is so in race all the time keep moving up i don't know how mm-hmm. it keep moving up when gotta stop when you gotta come down those mm-hmm. numbers right big part of that nowadays have to be with social media right <clears throat> big part of that is for that constant feeling down of people knowing or thinking they know that they will never reach the kind of life that they feel they deserve or mm-hmm. they want for themselves mm-hmm. comparing themselves with celebrities or other yeah. people the most of the time are just showing you shit that is not even real, right? Yeah. Man, <clears throat> I would say at this point, probably for just to say a name, Kardashian, any of those Kardashians or any of those girls, they should just start posting photos of them looking normal. Yeah. Now and then at least. Mm-hmm. So people realize, oh, put videos talking about their normal day life. Yeah. Or do a, man, you're already billionaire. Yeah. Do a reality TV showing reality and i know people don't want to see that won't pay you too much but at least you're doing a great thing for a lot of people that gotta see it and be like oh so they got problems too yeah oh so they actually sweat yeah right you know what i mean Mm oh i don't know well i think i think sure i think i think we can we can do that but i think more productively i think is like right like telling your audience too or like the people that like i think that you also have to look like as a person, if, if you're if if you're feeling in fear, if you're going through those motions because you only see the good side and what, what's going on in social media, I think it's maybe not not having the expectation that these people are going to do something different, but looking for an alternative. And by that I mean I think that you know like I've <clears throat> I think you have to use these things to your advantage the way you want to, right? So one thing is. Um, look somewhere else right so where i found that and that has worked for me in my journey in trying to create a successful business is that i love listening to podcasts that like tell the full story right i'll listen Mm -hmm. to like how i built this or the school of greatness one of my two of my favorite podcasts and they interview like billionaires that have you know created amazing companies like uber school of greatness is a great one yes and and in those podcasts, like you hear all the shitty stories, like it, it, it's it's so inspiring because I would listen to like a person who started a 
an amazing business that we all know of now and take, you know, that we benefit from. And then you hear the stories of them being like, like hundreds of thousands of dollars in credit card debt. Like, you know, like their business is falling apart and like going through like things that I can't even imagine myself. Like if I imagine myself in that situation, I like, I, I almost go through a panic attack just listening to it. Right. Yes. Because, and then it goes, wow. Like if this person did it, like my shitty day that I had yesterday was not that bad. Mm -hmm. So I could definitely go through that. Right. No, yes, definitely. People should be exposed to more and more and more stuff. But it's part of what I'm trying to say. Uh, I feel, and I don't know, I'm just talking shit, right? Yeah. But I feel like it should be in in this celebrity mind. Like a social, social <laughs> responsibility. At this point, man, you already made it. Like, it, it's, it's cheating, but it's true. Like, reality TV is not real. Yeah. They create drama and complaints and fighting just because people is so attracted to watch the crap, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're making a business in this kind of field, right? If you are the kind of person who want to do reality TV, if you want to do a uh, Ink Masters mm -hmm. show or be in Ink Masters show, for example, you understand that to make that TV show successful, it has to be a lot of drama because that's what people want to watch. It's so sad to say out loud. I, I fight with this every day in myself, but it's true, right? Mm -hmm. It's not how I manage my life. I'm saying how reality TV works, yeah. for example, right? If you want to be a supermodel and, and sell a lot of lipsticks, you have to show your lips always perfect and yourself perfect so everybody want to kind of buy it and get it. Everyone want to achieve the same look as yeah. you have mm -hmm. and be like you and knowing that you made it just because you use your products kind mm -hmm. of and you got to buy them, right? Okay, I understand you doing that for your business but once you cross a line that you already so rich and, and, and so much money so successful and all of that, you don't need to destroy yourself or destroy your brand. Mm -hmm. But at least take some time to show people that you also have flaws like times. You're human. You are human and yeah. and you don't need to be so perfect to mm -hmm. be perfect. You yeah. know what I mean? That yeah. you can just be a normal being, human yeah. being, and still be loved and still be successful and still, you know what I mean? Yeah. Belong to a great uh world. Mm -hmm. But I don't I don't I don't feel I see enough. And and again, it's not the responsibility of a Kardashian to change the world. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they even have to do it. Or, yeah. or, I just kind of dreaming on the idea. Let's yeah. say that way, of why not? Why not to show yourself? You know what I mean? Now and yeah. then, or let people know that not everything is so perfect. You just peel back the curtain just a little bit. A little bit. Let people see a little bit inside of your world. If you're mm -hmm. really living that public life, mm -hmm. right? And, and and you already know that people is so attracted to you and they're feeling miserable for not being like you. It's not like it's, it's your fault. It's not like you did something bad. Why mm -hmm. you became famous being beautiful? No, it's not like it's not like that. You did what you have to do and it's good and you know what I mean? And it's mm -hmm. great that you succeed on your career. Why not to just show people, young girls, for example, that are growing right now, 12 years old, 13 years old mm -hmm. they're feeling like oh my god I'm so ugly I'm never gonna look like that no you're beautiful no 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 I never look like that mm -hmm. oh if I was beautiful why I have 10 likes and she got 2 million likes it's like yeah. no it's different words don't compare yourself yeah but it's hard listening from let's say for example if I'm talking to my daughter it's not the case just an example mm -hmm. let's say I'm talking to my daughter and I tell her no you're beautiful she's gonna be fuck you you're my dad of course you're gonna think mm -hmm. I'm beautiful right but Maybe if she see it from the role models that they're following and they yeah. tell them, listen, it's not like all day long I'm like mm -hmm. that. I also got down times. I also got my heart broken by a guy one point, some point in my life mm -hmm. or by a girl or whatever. I also, you know what I mean? Yeah. Got stomach ache or pity ache or whatever <laughs> exactly. it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. showing a little bit of the real world so they realize like, oh. yeah. So they're awesome. They're amazing. But they also went through shit to get yeah. to that point. Exactly. And they also live normal life mm -hmm. where they, you know what I mean? They're not, it's not like they're special. They're it's not just like, like they're so yeah. special. So, yeah. and I'm shit. Like yeah. that's the point, you know. Again, yeah. it's not about giving trophy to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's just showing people the struggle is yeah. part of the succeed. Yeah. Not everything just come. So yeah. if you're trying to develop yourself and, and succeed in life and you go through a struggle don't feel like oh why they didn't go to a struggle they just have beautiful pictures and yeah. they're perfect no they went to a struggle they just not want to talk yeah. about it every day but it, it's there 
Yeah. And you're completely right. In those shows like like uh, School of Greatness, School of yeah, School, School of, of Greatness, Greatness is a great podcast because he interviewed all those millionaires or billionaires mm -hmm. that succeed now, but they've been through a lot. Of yeah, like it was like it was problems to get there. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, sometimes I listen to that stuff and I just hear like the struggles. It's like wow, yeah. like so many people who came from nothing and like just worked really hard, <clears throat> and you know, and did something. And I mean, that the other side, too, of that is like, you know, like the hustle culture of being like, you know, like give up everything and go for it. Right. You know, but also like similar to that is that like, OK, well, you also have to find balance in it all. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we we're talking about it earlier, like about about me. And it was that like, you know, right now I feel like I'm so early in my stage of of that, even though I'm like starting like a little bit later in my life that I feel like it's just so necessary for me to just like just go so hard to get to a point where like not that I'm comfortable it's not about being comfortable but like knowing that like I made it right like anything I feel like very blessed to have everything that we have but right now like if we stop it like it all just goes away mm -hmm. right but in but being able to work to a point where like I, I get to a point where like not that I can relax or I can stop but I know that like you know what it's it's working and like we can have longevity if we if we keep working i don't have to go crazy but i keep working at it right but i think that like in the beginning of everything like you just have to put so much energy yes you know definitely yeah definitely you gotta get to a point where you can now sit down and see like okay uh do i need to keep pushing myself this hard or or now i can't get to enjoy and it, it gotta be different for everybody i i think every day like Why people like Steve uh, Steve Jobs? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Um, what is his name? The guy from Amazon, Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Sorry, thank you. Why why he keep going so hard? Yeah. Um, you already made it. Relax, bro. Enjoy yourself. Try to. I don't know. It's yeah. just different people, right? I can't understand it because back in the day, I needed a twenty dollar to live my day, mm -hmm. and right now. That's nothing, right? Twenty dollars mm -hmm. don't make sense. Why you need twenty dollars? Yeah, that won't take anything. you nowhere. Yeah. Back then, it was a lot of fucking money for me. I, I eat Chinese food five bucks, and that was great meal for one day, right? Mm -hmm. When you struggle, you wanna overcome that state, and every step when you overcome, now you get accustomed to that moment, and then you overcome that, mm -hmm. and you always striving for more and more yeah. and more i don't know that's human nature i guess yeah. but we always do it no everybody's like that but some people do it but again you have just to stop and think for yourself what is you mm -hmm. right you do gotta you define do? your own level like of your own level and your own what is what is important for you yeah. because what it used to be important for me or what i thought was important for me like having a nice house or a nice car i realize it's nothing i, I don't care about it i don't mm -hmm. I, doesn't mean anything no matter what i have material i have whatever i have material is for a purpose let's say that way mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. um i have a nice computer because i need it to work yeah it's not just because i need the best computer it's just mm -hmm. because i need it for work mm -hmm. makes sense yeah. you know what i mean so everybody have to get so for some people yes they want a jet that is two kilometers long and and mm -hmm. they can you know what i mean yeah. travel the world every day or whatever for me it's that kind of things are not important it doesn't yeah. mean that they're diff worse and better than me it's just different yeah. people you just have to identify right yourself and yeah. pursue you right yeah. and think and plan and manifest your boo-boo right yeah yeah do your boo-boo do it's your boo-boo it's just about you know finding joy and, and putting good in, out into the world yeah man yeah. so Brother, th three hours. I told you, time oh flies. God, It's yeah. in a second. It's <laughs> three hours, 15 minutes, but I took like a five minutes pee break. <laughs> <laughs> Your Instagram. Yeah. It, Web, please, it, you tell him. It's Weber P, W E V E R P. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, and then our mad, uh, our studio is Mad We Are. So, and our website is madweare.com. And, um, you know, if, if you want to learn about the art festival, if you want to learn about everything that we're doing, the best way to get in touch is through the Instagram. Just type in mad we are and uh, and, and you'll see us come up. Um, yeah. And, and if you, if you want to support us, you know, just, you know, spread the word about the art manifestation. Come hang out with us on August 28th. Um, you know, 
if, if you're following us on social media, just please share our, share everything that we got going on and help spread the message and uh, and just come you know come with some good vibes and manifest your dreams. Awesome, man! For anybody that is a parent, bring your kids. Yeah, of kids. young kids, bring them over. Pe kids need your to pets. be exposed yeah. to art. Uh -huh. Walk your pets in the park. Yeah. Buy them a hot dog or whatever. But kids need to be really exposed to art. Like, yep. we don't see it too much nowadays in TV shows or anything like that. Um, we need to expose expo get exp kids exposure. Oh, my God. Exposed to art. Exposed Sorry, man. Yeah. Um, thank you, man. Thank yeah, you for dude. coming. Thank you for the conversation. Of course, man. It's uh, it's awesome. I love I love hanging out with you. I love hanging out with, with, uh, with an artist that has paved the way and created something so <laughs> magnificent for us in in this in this local community so i appreciate it so oh, much man, i appreciate you thank mm. you thank you so much man Fantastic good luck with the event i'm gonna be there for sure uh -huh. and please everybody come and support it uh -huh. we, we need this to happen and keep happening fantastic awesome man thank you brother you're very welcome man go and do what you have to do brother <laughs> we'll do.